Harvey Bay Auto Glass is your local 24-7 mobile service. For replacement glass for all vehicles, including cars, trucks and heavy machinery, plus chip and crack repairs and window regulator repairs, call Harvey Bay Auto Glass. We come to you.
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Vance Online's coverage of the Harvey Bay Auto Glass 410 Grand Slam. Awesome fun 410 sprint car event tonight from Lanier Dirt Speedway. Jay Kennedy and tonight joining me in the commentary box, Bo Albert. Bo, it's going to be great fun tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be some interesting challenges out here for all these drivers. Of course, with the dirt cars, you know, we've had only a couple of, a handful of tracks for so long. And then out of nowhere, Lanier has come in the uh, one of the newest updates and uh, really shook things up. It's a very different track to what we're used to. Kicks up so much dirt and uh, these drivers are going to have a very, very interesting race here tonight. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see a few heat races. We'll have uh, guys out on track very, very soon. Putting down quick laps as well. So um, two heat races for every driver as well as uh, one run, qualifying run of two laps as well. Uh, points accumulated over the night. And then from there, they will have a B main and an A main. So should be very, very fun. Uh, good format. And looking forward to seeing how the night progresses. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. And looking at some of the heats we've got, we've got some very tasty lineups coming up with lots of talented drivers. Uh, the field is full of very, very experienced dirt races and all the big names you'd expect. So uh, expect to see these times in the heats coming up. Going to be very, very close. And uh, that's one of the fun things about dirt racing is, you know, we talk on circuits, you know, if you're a tenth behind the car in front, you're doing okay. But if you're a tenth behind on a dirt track, you have so much time to find. This type of racing comes down to the hundredths every single time it should be a lot of fun when we get into this in the next couple of minutes we'll have the first car out on track we'll keep you up to date with what is going on as best as we can first car is actually out on track right now by the looks which is tim ryan that's correct and uh, he's putting down an 11 1 to kick start proceedings tonight so that's a very very quick time and uh he'll be Pretty happy with that, I would imagine. Driver out is our colleague in the booth here, Cameron Dance. And the nice high line. Been talking to Cam a little bit about this event and how it will actually work in regards to the groove on the track. And he says by the end of the night, you won't know where to go. Pretty much hugging against the, the wall will be the go, but some guys will try and work it on the bottom line as well. So, target time, Tim Ryan, as he said, 11.1. .1. Dance will cross the line for this lap. 11.2. So, pretty good showing there from Cam. He'll uh, be relatively happy with that, I think. He's uh, still doing quite well there, so uh, he'll be happy with that. And as uh, so we have our next driver on the track then, which is Alan Tarkin. And uh, I believe he's on his very first hot lap now. And uh, so he's, oh, he's actually just starting his lap now. So we'll be able to follow this one through, uh, taking a very middle line through the first turn, then going right up almost towards the wall there, through the second turn, across the line to complete his very first lap. And that's an 11.6, so he'll be looking for an improvement on this lap. We'll see what he can do as he gets so close to that outside wall as he finishes this second lap now through the final turn. What is it going to be for Alan Tarkin? It's an 11.256. Yep. Three thousandths of a second, sorry, five thousandths of a second ahead of Cameron Dance. Bob King up next, the organizer of this event for Race on Oz. Big thank you to Race on Oz for giving us the invitation to come along and broadcast this event tonight. Big thank you to Bob for all his work behind the scenes as well as the rest of the admin team. Yeah, the Race on Oz iRacing team is a fantastic, uh, has a fantastic dirt program which they've really been making big strides for. And uh, for those that don't know what Race On Oz is, it's basically an Australian-based community for sim racing, uh, specifically on both console and PC. So uh, if you're looking for either of those platforms, it's a fantastic place to go to. But for Bob King right now, it's uh, going to be an 11-1-3-6, and he's just narrowly behind Tim Ryan, but currently he's in second. And not far off as well, only four hundredths of a second behind. We've got a Tim Harris next for Dynamic Sim Racing. start his flying run interesting the line is completely different from what we've seen in other broadcasts with this big wide open track here at Lanier first lap 11.1 needs to find a few hundredths of a second to improve that was close to the wall 
does an 11-2 on the second lap. So his first lap was quickest. First driver to have that situation occur as we go Daniel Gao next. Yep, so Daniel Gao for the race on his R racing team. Uh, raced against him for a long time in a very handy circuit racer too, but an even better dirt racer. He kickstarts his first lap, taking a very middle line as a lot of drivers have done through this first corner. Then he's gonna, he's also gonna go with a relatively tight line through the second. He's gonna start his second lap now, but his first lap was an 11-2. as a relatively good time to get on the board. He's gonna be hoping for an even better improvement, getting very close to the outside wall there. And an even closer to the inside wall on turn two, comes across the line. It's an 11-3, no improvement. But uh, he was not afraid to get close to those walls, Jay. Yeah, that was pretty ambitious. I was surprised, especially coming through turns three and four on that second lap. He was very close to the wall. Brenton Hobson, our next driver out. Very familiar driver to a lot of our viewers. Of course, his own YouTube channel, which gets quite a lot of views based on his dirt content. So it'd be good to see Hobbo out on track. Starts his first flying lap. Again, that middle line through the corner. First lap in the 11s, 11-3. Want to look for a big improvement here on this second lap. Coming across the finish line on the second. Does 11.298, that's seventh position. Yep, so he currently goes P7. So uh, I'm not sure if he'll be too happy with that. He probably would have wanted a little bit more. But uh, we'll see if that is down to Hobbo just not getting the good lap in. Because uh, we know he does get very, very competitive when it comes to the racing. So we'll see if he moves forward. But uh, we're on to our next driver now. Yeah, Aaron Wilton's actually the next driver out. I missed Aaron in the list. So he's now on his flying lap. KRF Motorsports. First lap, 11.4. Want to find a fair bit of time on this second one. Interesting, he's running a middle line through the chutes between turns... Four and one, and between two and three in the second lap, no improvement. It was an 11.5. Nathan Britton in the triple seven, the next driver out for Race on Oz. Yep, so here comes Nathan Britton in that uh, brand new livery for the Race on Oz racing team with the uh, Trackstar sponsorship. A great pickup from those guys. But uh, right now, Brito is not thinking about his racing gear. He's thinking about his gears he's putting down on the track as he flies through the opening section of corners and now through the three and four complex on the power. And uh, he's going to register his first lap time as an 11.5. He's a very competitive driver, so he's going to want more, but he's not getting the grip he would like through that first one and two complex of corners, running very tight to the wall, just like we saw his teammate Daniel Gao across the line. It's an improvement, 11.4, but it's only good enough for ninth place, Jay. Yeah, Britain won't be overly impressed with that. Looked very ragged. That's just through the mid corner. So Brad Cooper, the next driver out in 0.93. Starts this flying lap. Nice and smooth through turns one and two. Rain that middle line, staying through the middle. Dropping it down towards the wall through three and four. Big cross up moment coming out of four. 11 3 for the first lap. Runs it through the middle. Turns one and two on his second. Again through the middle in three and four across the line. That was an improvement. 11.254 moves into fifth. Yeah, fantastic lap and uh, looks very, very smooth, very, very clean. And that's how you have to do a lap in these sprint cars. You don't want to be throwing it around too much. And uh, he really got on top of it on that lap. Ryan Harris, the next driver out on track. Another dynamic sim racing driver. Starts his fly. Running pretty good line through the middle. Then three and four. These things don't really like going sideways. So you want to try and keep the line as, as straight as possible and the car as straight as possible. 11-1 for the first lap. Second lap. Improvement again. 11-1-6-1. Moves into third. That was very, very good from Ryan Harris. He absolutely nailed that. He'll be stoked with that. And a very, very competitive time. And only a tenth away from pole. And uh, that's looking like a very, very competitive race car as we have Brett Wheeler running the tracks at the moment. Going through the middle of the corner, through one and two, as he now fires the car into three and four. Managing to get a pretty nice line, not too much oversteer, doesn't look like he's working the wheel too much, and that shows in the lap times too with an 11.225. He's looking for an improvement on this second lap, 
not using all the available track, playing a little bit safe, trying to get the power as down as well as he possibly can. Across the line, it's an improvement, and he's going to go to P4. At 11175. Got right on to Brett. Plus Brett had coverage of night one of this event on his Twitch channel. Thank you to Brett for bringing coverage of night one. Next driver out is Lewis Hewitt. The triple six race on Oz. 410 sprint car. Very wide start to the lap. Through three and four. Now's when it counts though. Nice and shallow through one and two and then sends it very wide. This looks nice. Very different line from what we've seen from all the other drivers. Again, shallow through the corner. You're making it nice and wide. 11-2 for the first lap. Good through one and two again. Through three and four across the line. Cruise with an 11-2-3-6. Moves into seven. James Robbie, the next driver out. Yep, having a bit of trouble with my timing and scoring, but he's going to get himself underway now. Flying across the line, accelerating up to 190 kilometers an hour in these cars, which have insane power to weight ratio. They're just constantly asking for more and more grip because they have so much power, you can never put enough down. And uh, right now, James Robbie's putting down an 11.6 for his first lap. He's going to want a bit more in his second lap, not using all the track again, trying to square off that exit as much as he can. He comes across the line to finish his second lap. That's a huge improvement with an 11.26, and that's going to go to P11. 14 runners so far. Good improvement there for James Robbie on that second lap. Darren Parameter, the next driver out in the number 96. Pretty cool looking sprint cars here. I'm loving a lot of the paint jobs we're seeing tonight. Uh, we get underway for the first flying lap for Darren Parameter. Interesting that a little bit of a groove starting to form through the corners too, which will play a big factor as we get into race mode. 11-3 for the first lap for Darren. If he can improve on his second one, runs a very wide line in comparison to his first on the second lap. And no improvement, 11-4 on that one. Finish that lap in 13th position, Ryan Gorton next. Ryan Gorton leaving the pit lane, almost getting into a wheelie straight out of the pit. So he's ready to go, he's excited, and he very well should be as he fires the car into one. Hooking up a very nice inside line, moving out to the higher groove there through on the exit of turn two as he hooks it up into three now. Still looking very, very good. Looking very, very smooth on the wheel. That's an 11-2, very competitive first lap there. Oh, that's a bit wider than he would have liked through turn two. So that's gonna hurt his time potentially. But can he make it up through three and four? He's gonna come across the line and we'll find our answer. And unfortunately, he could not make that time up. But that was a very, very impressive first lap. 11-2-3-0 yep, on the second. 11-2-0 on the first. Puts him in sixth position. Joel Berkeley out next for TTLS Esports, a team we're very familiar with here at V8 Online. Joel, a driver that we don't see too much on V8 Online, pretty much focuses on the dirt stuff and is quite good at it too. Comes through three and four in his first flying lap. And first lap time, pretty good. 11, 1, 3, 3. Goes into second on the first lap. Will he improve on the second? Doesn't look as smooth the second lap. Shows on the timesheet with 11.27. Great first lap, though, for Joel Berkeley. He's in P2. A frankly terrifying first lap, getting millimetres away from the wall. And uh, we'll see if that's a trait for the TTL cars. We saw Cam Dance doing it. And Dylan Sharman is not afraid to use the walls either as he begins his hot lap now, firing the car through one and two. A very, very bright livery on that TTL car. The number 91 now coming through to complete his first lap. These cars have been quick. How quick are they in the hands of Dylan Sharman? It's going to be an 11 one 2, 6. He pips his teammate Joel Berkeley just for P number two at the moment. But Tim Ryan still stands at number one. But for how much longer Sharman comes across the line? And Ryan will hold on to the pole for a little bit longer. Sharman can only manage P2. Lap. Another a run of TTL drivers in a row. Josh Harm out next. Same situation for Harm as with Berkeley, a driver we don't see too much. The roadside focuses on the dirt. It's underway. Starting his whole laps. Nice through three and four. That would be pretty good as well. Very smooth and an 11 one five. So into fifth position for Harm. 
comes through. We complete the second lap. The second lap looked very smooth too. Virtually identical, identical laps times. times there. Yeah. <laughs> so he will finish his lap sitting in P5. So James Rice now uh, still about to leave pit lane there in the number five car. That's a very, very nice looking livery. I have to say, quite like that. The dark accent and then uh, obviously the red uh, body chassis all around. But uh, he's getting ready to kick off his lap now. He's got Rice here on the front of the wing. But uh, let's see how nicely this lap goes as he fires it through the exit of turn two now. Hooking him up into three. Looking pretty smooth at the moment. Still holding an inside to outside lane. It's an 11-2, so very good first lap. A lot of cars at the moment are not improving on their second lap. So we'll see if James Rice can buck that trend a little bit as he now comes across to start uh, to finish his second lap. And uh, he's going to continue that trend ever so slightly slower on his second lap. Two consistent lap times though, which is always good to see as our focus changes to Jordan Charge for Synergy Sim Racing. Number 60 car starting his flying lap. There'll be a bit of friendly competition between the Sim Synergy Sim Racing cars. Charge nice through three and four on his first lap. Nice and smooth to start the second into seventh straight away with 11.16. Through three and four. I don't think he's going to improve. That looked pretty ragged through four. Had to have a second grab at it in 11.3. So next up is going to be Stephen Cass as he fires away on his out lap. Um, don't have much time to mentally prepare for these laps. You're pretty much straight into it the second you get called green. And he's already starting his flying lap now in that uh, Hog's Breath sponsored uh, sprint car. So looking very, very nice, striking and uh, with a massive American flag on it. And uh, he's going to be taking America all the way to freedom on an 11.2 there on his first lap. Puts him into 18th place. We'll see if he can improve on his second lap. Looking a bit smoother, a bit tighter on the corners too. So we'll see if that can get him any improvement. And it does, and a big yeah. improvement at that with an 11.188 to move up to P number 9. Top 10 all have done 11.1s. Tenth of a second separating first to, uh, first to tenth at the moment. 11th through to 22nd. Around about three tenths separating them, or two and a half tenths. Brandon Schultz, the next driver out. And the number 93. Madman on the front. See how mad this lap is. Very wide line in comparison to the rest of the field. First lap. 11.8 on the first one. Really improved. This looks a little bit of a tighter line, so probably an improvement in time. 11.139 goes to fifth. Great second lap. That's a remarkable improvement from being comfortably last to almost nabbing pole position away there, only half a tenth away there, and uh, moves himself into the top five. That's an incredible lap, but uh, we're just waiting for our next car out on track, which will be Scott Butler, uh, who is heading out in the 094 in the race on Oz car, which is uh, also sporting that track star livery, which they've uh, just recently picked up. As he's uh, slowly trundling his way around, very slow pit lane, and uh, maybe some technical issues, issues going on here, Jay. I think he might have missed coming out onto the track, possibly, or beating in pits, which is quite easy to do in these cars. Oh, he's just run over a few crew chiefs. No big deal. We're now doing some rally cross. Uh, I'm very excited for rally cross, but uh, it's a bit early for Alicia yeah, Scott Butler. Quite yet. But you've you found your way onto the track now, so it's time to hit that green flag when you get around this next corner, and uh, we'll see how your spring car skills go. And now crossing the start line there, and a very nice line through turn one and two. Maybe a little bit higher than he would have liked. Not quite using all the track on the exit either. But uh, running that middle group once again, as we've seen by so many drivers, he's going to cross the line for his first lap to be an 11-4. And uh, that's unfortunately going to put him at the back at the moment. But he does have one more lap to redeem himself. And we'll see if the 94 car can, in fact, redeem himself. It's an 11-3-7. He goes to P22. Rockland Smith will be the next driver out. Gavin Sadler, uh, for Gavin Sadler Racing. So... See how he can go on this lap, or these two laps. 
Got to get your mind right into groove straight away. As soon as you get out of the pitch, you're straight into it. Get speed up to come across the start-finish line and start your flying laps. Target time at 11 one zero. Smith could be a driver that could potentially knock that off. First lap looked very, very smooth. Very, very clean. 11-2. Needs to find a tiny little bit more. Got the car very, very hooked up through three and four. That second lap looked like an improvement. It was an 11-1-9-6. Moves into 12th. So, next up is going to be Jock Goodyear. Uh, he's been around in ERT for about a month now, so he's not much of a newcomer anymore, and he definitely would not be a newcomer to anyone who follows dirt racing closely. A very talented driver, and uh, does a lot of real-world stuff as well, so he knows what he's doing when it comes sideways, but does he know what he's doing when it comes to getting sideways at Lanier in the 410? We're going to see what his first lap is. He gets very sideways, very, very high around turn three and four on his first lap, and that's going to put him at the back right now. Come on, Jock. You can do it. Get that second lap in. Hook up three and four. That looks much nicer, much tighter. Where is that going to put him on the grid? An 11-2. It's going to be good for 21st. Struggle to get it hooked up at the end of the lap there. Go to Josh Rogers next. The man that's turned into a bit of a jack of all trades has Josh Rogers. Of course, getting ready for the Bathurst 1000 this weekend. Decided to jump in on Tuesday night as a fill-in. Made it into the final. Made the qualifier and now he's in the main event. Anything could happen for this driver. Who knows? Josh Rogers comes through three and four. Very close to the wall. Not a bad lap. 11-2 on the first one. Just finding that grip very well. This second lap looks very good. Will he improve? Just. 11-2-7-6. Moves up a spot. Finds himself in 21st. Gavin Sadler takes to the track, getting very sideways out of pit lane. And uh, he's going to see what he can do on this flying lap, which is about to start for the 71 car. We'll see what he can do now as he goes very, very tight through turn one and two. And I'm not sure he got that hooked up as nicely he potentially would have liked. Taking a very wide exit through three and four, potentially getting ready for the uh, second lap because he knew he had slightly messed that first lap up. But this looks a lot better through one and two on this first lap. Can he hook up three and four? Looks good. So Gavin Sadler, let's see what he can do across the line. An 11-3 improvement, and that's going to go to 25th. Two drivers left to go. Zach Masters out next for Race on Oz. The 95. Because this has the potential to swing whether you'll make the finals tonight or what race you'll be in and your group position for the finals. Because points count in this. The Masters across the line start his second lap, first lap at 11.5. Needs to find a fair bit of time running a completely different line down the straights. Very shallow through the corner. And across the line for the second lap. 11.499 finds himself in 29th. And our final driver of the night to be doing these laps is going to be Cam Holler. And uh, we'll see what he can do if he can holler up a lap around Lanier National Speedway as he begins his first flying lap, flying down until turns one and two and gets that hooked up very, very, very nice. Goes all the way out to the edge of the track there, almost getting onto the dirty stuff, not where you want to be, but he's going to bring it home across the line on his first lap for an 11.288. He's going to want to improve on that because that's only P23 at the moment. We'll see if he can hook it up in three and four and get that Logitech G ERT car across the line, almost into the fence, and 11.250, he improves, but nearly at a dramatic cost there. That was very close to the wall. If uh, it had been a slight little bit wider, that would have been wall, but Tim Ryan ends up finishing in first, the number 98. So congratulations to Tim. Dylan Sharman in second, Joel Berkeley third, Bob King in fourth, and Brandon Schultz in fifth position. That will help dictate what happens with qualifying of oh, sorry with points later on tonight so 150 points for qualifying first down to 32 points for the 30th driver we are await now the grid for heat number 1 to come out and get ready to go oh, i can't wait this track should provide some crazy racing and uh, like I alluded to in the uh, intro, that uh, there's quite a lot of dust that gets thrown up around here. So 
Uh, you might want some windscreen wipers, but I'm not sure they'd quite fit on a 410 spring car, but you could try. But uh, they might look a little bit better on uh, Stephen Lattimore's NASCAR truck, which we're going to be using as the pace car at the moment. Uh, that's not a bad livery, Jay. What do you think of that? Pretty cool. Uh, a bit different. Uh, a pretty good look for Stephen Lattimore's got at the moment. Stephen Lattimore, of course, the uh, painter for the race on Oz team. Um, as you can see, a lot of striking liveries there. A very, very dark blue there. Looks quite nice, I think. But uh, I, I do think I missed the uh, VW Jetta that we had running around at one point in these races. That was incredible fun. But uh, Jay, we've got some pretty interesting heats coming up. But I've got to say, who's your favorite looking forward for the end of the night? Yeah, it should be, and as you alluded to with those uh, talks of the race, uh, race bot broadcast, another driver that does quite well in them quite often is Lewis Hewitt, and uh, he's down in P15 at the moment, but uh, from what I've seen on the broadcast, he has a lot more pace than uh, P15, so uh, his one for me to look forward to uh, moving up the grid and making up some positions and uh, potentially springing a surprise come the finals, but uh, as you alluded to as well, I have to stop saying alluded, I think that's my favourite word tonight, but... Um, yeah, those, those top few look pretty handy at the moment. Not the counting down or anything, Jay. It helps if I unmute myself after I tried to sneeze before in the broadcast too, if I'm trying to talk about stuff, doesn't it? Here you are talking, oh, to, no. talking to nobody. Here we go. That was good. It was only for a minute. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, big weekend with Bath Bathurst 1000 this weekend. Not many drivers out there that will be competing, but I do know one driver that's competing. You're going to have a crack at your first ever Bathurst 1000. Oh, I am absolutely terrified. Um, if there's any race you're going to go in for your debut, the biggest race of the year, no pressure. <laughs> but uh, I've got a fantastic teammate in uh, Michael Cracknell. Uh, he's a fantastic peddler in the V8, and uh, he'll be making his comeback as well. But uh, look, it, the field that we've got lined up for this year's uh, 1000 is absolutely nuts. So if we're not last, I think we'll be happy because the field and level that this race will be run at on Sunday is unlike anything V8 Online has ever seen before. The last commentator who jumped in and participated in a Bathurst 1000 finished 23rd. That would be me. So uh, there's your target, mate, Ooh. 23rd. All right, all right. So last year, yeah, last year finished 23rd. And the year be uh, two years before I finished 25th. So I've, I've run two and I've finished two. Not many drivers that have run two and finished two. Uh, a few drivers that have uh, participated in all three that we've had previous and haven't finished one. So we'll, uh, we'll have a bit of trivia around the uh, V8 Gops Bathurst 1000 on the Facebook page over the next couple of days. But yeah, Saturday night from 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time and then Sunday 11.30 a.m. right through from start to finish. We will be here live the whole way through. Can't wait for it. Really looking forward to it. Will be a lot of fun. A big, big day of sim racing, but we wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, when everyone signs up to V8 Scops at the start of the season, you know, they've already got that eye on that season calendar and all eyes just go straight to that event. So a lot of drivers will have put up, put in months, maybe even more of a practice into this one. They've all put so much into this and uh, it really is going to be a case of last man standing and who's put in the most amount of practice when it comes into this event. 
and uh, I can't wait for that. But right now, it's getting very, very loud here at Lanier Speedway because we've got some sprint cars heading out of the pit lane. Before we get to them, I'm just going to quickly say how you can tell how serious it's going to be because my team, Talk Inc., is actually practicing. So that's how serious it will be this weekend. They never practice, but they're doing some. Heat one on screen at the moment. Darren Parameter will start from first position. Actually, better double check that it hasn't changed on me before while I've copied my graphics over. Bob King will start second. Kevin Sadler third. Brett Wheeler in fourth. Brian Harris fifth. Tim Harris sixth. Lewis Hewitt seventh. James Rice in eighth. Jordan Charge in ninth. And Ryan Gorton in tenth position. 12 laps ahead for these guys. Yep, 12 laps, and it's going to get crazy real quick. And uh, I really cannot wait to see how these guys go. And uh, with the lineup we've got, we have some very quick guys in there. And uh, it's going to get interesting so quickly that I think that on my racing rig, I might need to buckle myself in because uh, it's going to get very, very crazy. Should be a great heat coming up right now. Heat number one. We won't have any live graphics in regards to positions. This is all being run in a practice session, which is why we're seeing a, uh, a manual safety car or safety truck, I should say. And the, the driver's all setting up manually. So um, all of the scoring is all done manually as well. So we can't rely on iRacing's live scoring or timing or anything to help us out. So I'm going to have to rely on Bo to, to tell me what's going on because I can't hear what's going on as well. But Bo can, luckily. I hope. <laughs> uh, quickly goes through settings and changes everything. <laughs> no, it's uh, it's all under control, or as under control as V8 Online gets at times. Which is not but, uh, at all. Well, <laughs> you're a talking driver. What do you expect? <laughs> it's the Shots way, fired. The way it is. <laughs> we're actually prepared for a change today. I think prepared as we're going to get anyway. But I think we're getting ready to go. We're already underway, Jay, and yep. it is a fantastic start around the outside from the race on Oscar. I believe that's Bob King, so he is rocketed away there, and he's going to take the lead all clean through one and two at the moment, except for one TTL car. But uh, at the moment, Bob King has absolutely run away from the field. The Darren Parameter next, and then 56 in behind, which is Brett Wheeler into third. Back in the field, some big names stuck way back in the field. Gavin Sadler's in fourth position. But right at the back, being Ryan Harris, Jordan Charge, trying to work their way forward. Contact between the 60 and the 48. Jordan Charge, big hit from the 48. Tim Harris, down in front. Bob King's got it all to himself at the moment. He has, but his teammate is uh, not having quite as much luck there. Lewis Hewitt doing everything he can to get past Ryan Harris, and it's just not working for him at the moment. Every corner trying to slide it up the inside, but it's just not working for him. And uh, he is really beginning to work on that car there. As we're seeing even further back in the background there, we have more cars all fighting it out. The race on Oz cars of Ryan Gordon is uh, also having an absolute nightmare trying to keep it around there, but there's just cars going everywhere at the moment, just trying to find any position they can, because. We're already beginning to run out of laps here, Jay. Yeah, almost contact between Hewitt and the 12 of Harris. And catching back up, the 48 of Harris as well. We've got two Harrises in the race just to make things extra confusing. But Bob King's got it around about a two-second lead. But behind, Brett Wheeler up the inside. Gavin Sadler on the outside line. Wheeler does a great job, cover off, and will hold on to third for now. A fair bit of pressure being applied by Sadler at the moment. Sadler all over the gearbox of the 56 car, trying to find anything he can, but we're going to get the white flag this time around. Bob King in a very dominant position at the moment. I don't think anyone is going to come even close to him. That car is going to have not a scratch, but behind there's going to be plenty of scratches all over a lot of cars. The race on those cars still trying to do everything they can to get past cars, but uh, it's going to be pretty much as they were onto that white flag lap. So those opening laps were crazy, Jay. I think that's just the start of what we're going to see tonight. We'll, uh, we'll get the results up on screen as soon as we can. And from there, get ready for the second heat. 
uh, pace truck has a bit of a putt around to uh, put on a bit of a show while we wait. But you can see the groove starting to form already. Still five more heats to go. B main. Uh, we've got the pole dash as well. And uh, A main coming up at the end to decide our winner. 40 laps. Yeah, 40 laps is really going to test people. And with that always unknown quantity of safety cars or no safety cars, uh, fuel is always going to be a big issue in those races. So uh, these drivers might be looking at fuel numbers now, but it's all going to come very, very important. Uh, towards the end of the night when we have that big 40 lap dash for the big prizes and uh, it's going to be something all teams have to focus on and it's one of those things that you can't always predict yeah, it'll be a really really tough slog for the guys you can really see the groove starting to form coming into turn one and coming into turn three like we can hopefully put some results up on the screen hopefully this works Please tell me I haven't broken things. Hey, look at this. Look at this. I actually made something work. Look at that. There we go. Results are on screen. Bob King in first. Darren Pram in a second. Brett Wheeler in third. Gavin Sadler fourth. Ryan Harris fifth. Lewis Hewitt in sixth. Then Tim Harris, Ryan Gorton, Jordan Charge, and James Rice rounding out the field. Look at that. I actually made something work. That. There we go. Progress is being made here. You said that we weren't organized here, hey? <laughs> well, we're getting those drivers out for heat number two. They're beginning to cycle their way out on track. So uh, this is going to be a very interesting heat. A lot of big names in there, including some of the quickest qualifiers outright. Uh, so this will be a very interesting race to see how we go. But uh, we'll line through the grid for this race right now. And uh, on pole for this one, it's going to be Steve Cass with Dylan Sharman lining up alongside him. Uh, we've got Alan Tacken and Lockie Smith in third and fourth with Joel Berkeley and Daniel Gow in sixth for Race on Oz. Scott Butler also racing for them in P number seven, followed by Jock Goodyear for ERT. And then Nathan Britton and uh, James Robbie will be your 10, 410 sprint cars, making up heat number two. And uh, this is going to be a very interesting one with a lot of quick drivers in there. Yeah, this would be a very, very tough heat to progress out of. We'll, uh, we'll see a lot of argy-bargy stuff going on in this one because there's some big names, and I hate to say it, but there's some big egos in this one too, which which is always good to see. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this one plays out. The driver's just there. Sitting on the grid, getting ready to begin their pace lap any second now. And uh, the one to watch on that front row of the grid is going to be Dylan Sharman, second fastest qualifier. And in front of him, uh, he's only got one car between him and that victory, which is going to be Steve Cass. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see if Steve Cass puts up much of a fight or if he uh, tries to uh, just let Dylan Sharman go and run his own race. We saw the outside on the front row in the first race. Big advantage from Bob King out there. So we'll see this one, whether it's the same for Sharman. Start to see the line really start to form during this race. 12 laps again for these drivers. Base truck pulls away and they await the green flag instruction. Green flag. Good jump. Stephen Cass. Inside row got a great jump. The 21. Looking to make big moves straight away. Oh, oh, big crash. Monster crash. Caution is out. Cars on their roof. Mayhem has started. And that took a lot of big names out very, very quickly. Sure did. That was a big, big crash. Get a cut price racing replay for that one because we definitely needed it. Stephen Cass got involved. I think the 21, Alan Tacken as well. Back and come up the track, there was contact, and there was contact between the teammates, the 9 and the 91, between Dylan Sharman and Joel Berkeley. There was contact there between those two as well. Everything in these races is happening so quickly that sometimes you can't even see your own teammates. And uh, we've got the two Hogs cars and the two TTL cars all coming together. Jock Goodyear, nowhere to go getting involved as well, and also one of the Race on Oz cars, so... 
A little bit of everyone getting involved in that, but uh, although one race on Oz car was taken out of that, uh, we actually had race on Oz first and second at that time in that heat, so uh, it kind of worked out as a whole for that team, but uh, I not sure what's happening in there. I believe we might be getting a full restart because that was just chaos from left to right. Yep. Be a good result if there is a full restart. It looks like there is because the 55 is moving up to the front to retake that pole position. Stephen Cass. Take two. Safety car being instructed to come into the pits at the end of this lap. So we will be going green at the end of this one. Going to get a full restart. The 55, albeit probably not the same 55. The other one might be a bit more beaten up. We're about to get the green, which has just been called right now. And it's going to be a fantastic start from the outside from Joel, uh, from Dylan Sharman. But he's just got nothing for the inside line as Steve Cash just absolutely pulls away. But Dylan Sharman immediately to the inside and gets the job done easily. But Steve Cash on the exit is going to get him back easily as well. So these two are just trading blows for blows, taking very, very different lines. And Steve Cass is going to continue to hold that position. But uh, Dylan Sharman working that inside line as much as he possibly can. And now we have the 911 also beginning to get in on the action. So this is getting interesting very quickly, right at the thick of the front of the field. And uh, there we go, Dylan Sharman to the front of the field. Steve Cass slowly losing more and more time to Dylan Sharman. And he's going to have to fall back into second. But he's going to very quickly come under pressure from the car behind as well. So it's all happening at the front of the field in this heat. Yeah, Lachlan Smith and the 911's right on the tail now, ready to pounce. As well as the 22 of Daniel Gao. And closing up fairly quickly too is Joel Berkeley. He's caught up a fair bit of ground in the last couple of laps. Now that he's up into fifth position. But here comes Smith looking right on the inside line. Big slide in. Bumps. The 55 of Cass out of the way. Moves into second position. Oh, we're almost three wide at one point. They're into three and four. And they're so close, and the 22 gets hit. Somehow holds on to the position. Joel Berkeley slides up the racetrack, almost gets punted by the 55. They're almost banging wheels again, and now they are banging chassis through three and four. These guys are giving everything they have and also giving their mechanics a huge repair bill as Joel Berkeley with another huge slide job on the 55 can't get it done. These TTL cars are quick, but boy, they are aggressive at the moment. It comes down to the format of the night. The, every position matters. Every point is going to be key. Coming down to the last couple of laps now. Not long to go in this one. The front two have checked out. And Berkeley might have actually got this done. Or not. Oh, this is gonna be big contact. contact. Berkeley. The 55 of Cass come together. And big difference. Finishing third and finishing last. Zero points that one get a replay of that last couple of corners there between Berkeley and Cass because that was huge that was a big accident there and the uh, 22 came so so close to getting involved in that as did actually all three race on Oscars all narrowly missed the uh, 55 which uh, was just spinning wildly and flipping out of control so uh, those cars got very lucky to make the finish as well but like you say like when you're running third and fourth in this race where points are so crucial sometimes it's not worth going for that one extra point if it means you're going to score potentially none at all that's what has likely happened for new drivers in that one because that was very messy by the end Get results up on screen as soon as we get them because yeah that was pretty full on race that one was great race good fun great battles but um yeah that that was pretty full on and uh there's actually a few tempers beginning to fly in the chat as well so uh it's only heat two but <laughs> things are getting even more heated already so uh, these next few heats could get very interesting as well. And uh, by the end of the night, we could have some very, very tense racing with drivers trying to do any kind of move they possibly can to make positions, which is what you're going to have to do when it comes down to that final. You have no chance to, uh, you know, just think about it cautiously or just play it safe. In those races, it's maximum attack. And uh, in heat number two, it's already beginning to come out like it is a final. 
And uh, for heat number three, with uh, some fantastic drivers in there, it's going to get even better. While we wait for the results to come through from heat two, we might run through the grid for heat number three. A little bit easier to run through that because that's all confirmed, whereas the results are still being adjusted. But Cameron Holler will start from first. Brendan Schultz, Tim Ryan, Zach Masters, Brad Cooper, Josh Harm, Josh Rogers, Brenton Hobson, Aaron Wilton, and Cameron Dance. He uh, wasn't looking forward to this first heat. He's starting from last. Yeah, well, from what we've seen, starting last may not be an entirely bad thing as there's so much chaos happening around and uh, drivers certainly aren't afraid to make passes happen. So uh, starting position is just basically a number in these races as drivers are just trying anything they can. And, um, you know, you really can make anything happen from any position. And I think that's the beauty of 410 sprint car racing is that so much can happen that you can never truly say this is who is going to win a race because there are so many variables that can kick up. Official results on screen for the last heat. Dylan Sharman, Lachlan Smith, Daniel Gow, Joel Berkeley, James Robbie, Scott Butler, Nathan Britton, Alan Taken, Jock Goodyear, and Steve Cass. The 10 positions from that last one. Get ready for heat number three. Drivers start to come out onto the track. Tim Ryan in this heat. He uh was the quickest called set quick lap for qualifying at the start. Be a good heat. Be good names in this one. In the zero ninety three though, just having a little bit of issues. He just clipped the wall. <laughs> Not ideal. I wasn't gonna comment on that, but a bit more than a little bump on the wall. Uh, but <laughs> these things are quite actually difficult to drive in a straight line, as weird as that sounds. Because of the stagger of the rear tyres they have, they're constantly pulling to the left of the track. So at low speeds, like they're doing on these formation laps, uh, it can get a bit tricky to even do the most simple tasks. Saw... It's definitely not a car you'd want <laughs> driving a safe way. No, uh, just saw Rogers there almost loop it as well as he got uh, underway. Start the pace lap for this 12 lap heat. Heat number three. We're almost halfway through our heats already. It's gone pretty quick this portion of the night. Uh, obviously, after we finish the heats, we will have B main, pole shuffle, and the A main as well. We'll have the pole shuffle, then the B main, then the A main. Love the pole shuffle. They're always good fun to watch. A little bit of action in those. Seeing a bit of contact already between Hobson. And I'm not sure who that was. I think it was the 11 of Josh Harm, but we get underway. Big contact between Hobson and Dance back at the field. Back up the front. They're all spread out. But fairly clean. Yep, fairly clean for now. And drivers have got away pretty single file, but look at the battle Whoa. for the leaders we're actually seeing a bit of contact a bit further down in the field there one of the ttl cars getting involved in a bit of a, a bit of a scuffle that was joshua rogers there in the 92 he uh, got a bit of a hip check there so hopefully no damage to that car but out front it's going to be the ert car of cam holler and uh behind him in very close proximity is brandon schultz who's uh doing a fantastic job but it's going to be caution coming out we can pick up the exact reason for the caution but thinking possibly because we've had so much contact back in the field oh there was a car stopped in the middle of the track it was josh rogers the 92. Oh, a huge hit with his teammate of all people so Josh Rogers was going a bit slow there after contact with the 95 and Cam Dance had nowhere to go but Dance straight into the back of Rogers' gearbox. A huge hit for the two uh, TTL cars and uh, that's a nightmare for both of them. Yeah, that's really hurt their night, TTL drivers. 
Oh, and we've had even more issues there. This time for our number one qualifier, Tim Ryan. The car has turned off and is not restarting for him. Very easy. You should have two. These cars need to be conserving a bit of fuel while they're uh, going around under these pace laps. And he would have probably shut the engine off to try and save a bit of fuel. And his race done. He's in the pits. Tim is not impressed in the chat, but unfortunately that all comes down to the uh, engineering time, uh, engineering team, sorry, behind those Evolution Racing Team cars, and unfortunately letting him down at the moment, but it's not letting Cam, uh, Cam Holler down at the moment. He has control of the field, and uh, we're going to be getting the pace car in on this lap, and it's going to be under the control of Cam Holler once again. We've only got a handful of laps to go after those chaotic opening laps, but it is about to get kick-started once again. And it is under Cam Holler's control, and he plants the right foot, and that's a fantastic jump. And uh, no one had a chance of going with him there. Yeah, very good jump. Managed to pull away from Schultz very, very quickly. The front three have checked out from the rest of the field. The 11 in harm in third position. Then back behind there, the rest of the field's pretty bunched up. Cooper and Hobson side by side for the fourth position at the moment. Cooper's just got it at the moment. But you can really see the two lines forming. It's getting a little bit tough down the bottom. Yeah, it is. You can see that black marking on the track, and that is just going to get worse and worse as the night goes on. And the second you put your wheels on that, you have no sense of grip, and uh, it's just going to be a very, very bad time for you. But uh, at the moment, we're just looking for some good battles, and we've got a good one here down the order for around 5th and 6th there as uh, Hobbo88 there is uh, under attack from Brad Cooper who uh, is just looking to struggle on that inside line at the moment Hobbo out high and uh, he's making that line work very well you can just see the advantage it gives you down the straights there and uh, Brad Cooper with that really slick inside uh, line on the track is just struggling and he finally admits defeat and moves up to the high line back at the front's closed up Schultz is catching Back up, but they can't be long to go in this one now. Has Schultz got anything to come back on the triple one? There it is. Check the flag. Race is done. They're still going though. Oh, they're having too much fun out there. They're going to go for Everyone one more. Everyone else backed it off. <laughs> Ace car's out there. Ace car had to come out to try and tell them to stop. Great battle though. <laughs> For well, the front positions, Brandon Schultz finishes second, but congratulations, Cameron Holler. He does pick up the win in that one. We, we spoke about at the start of the night, that inside line getting slicker and slicker as the night goes on, and it just becomes even more unusable. And uh, we're only three heats in, and Jay, our drivers on those inside lines were really struggling down there. Yeah, it's a place you don't want to be, you can see. From the aerial shot, you can see the big, thick black markings, which is now where the, uh, the slick track is. You're right up high on the groove now to find some grip. We'll uh, get the results up on screen in just a moment, which we have got. Click the right button. I can actually put them on the screen. That's always good. There we go. Look at that. Just like magic. Results on screen, Cameron Holler, Brent, Brendan Schultz, Josh Harm, Brenton Hobson, Brad Cooper, Cameron Dance, Zach Masters, Josh Rogers, Aaron Wilton, and Tim Ryan, DNF in that one. We get ready for heat number four. Yep, heat number four. It's looking like a good one. We've got some big names in there again with the likes of uh, Lewis Hewitt. We have Jordan Charge in there as well, uh, Bob King. So uh, we've got some good battles potentially brewing even before the race has started in uh, heat number four. It's going to be 12 laps once again, and uh, it's going to get spicy pretty quick, Jay. Yeah, I can't wait for this one. It should be a very, very good race. Gritter on screen, Ryan Gorton, Jordan Charge, James Rice, Lewis Hewitt, Tim Ryan, Ryan Harris, Tim Harris, Ryan Harris, Brett Wheeler, Gavin Sadler, Bob King, and Darren Parameter. The 10-car field for this one. Another good battle that we will have in this one. It's going to be a nice close fight once again. Drivers there just beginning to form up on the front straight there. 
We don't have anyone on the wall just yet, so we're all doing already doing better than we did last time. And uh, out the front there, we have our two cars there of Jordan Charge and Ryan Gordon. The Eraser Oz versus the Synergy Sim Racing car. And Benjamin J. Smith there directing all these cars around tonight is ordering the pace car to get moving because it's time to get heat number four rolling as uh, the number one pace truck, which looks so out of place with these crazy <laughs> powered away monsters behind it. And uh, he's going to get scared very, very soon, hide back to the pits and uh, unleash all kinds of hell in heat number four. I think there will be a fair bit too with this race. Some very big name drivers back in the field a little bit from where they would like to be. Get ready to go. Heat number four. The Knights event, the Harvey Bay Auto Glass 410 Grand Slam. We're away. That's a Grand oh, Slam. Oh, we've got a crash. car on the fence already. Gavin Sadler. Flipped the outside wall. Caution called. That was a huge crash there for Sadler. Up price racing replay of that you can see the 71 on screen just moved over a little bit and then just hit the part of the wall that sticks out a tiny little bit it was a bit of a strange one so yeah uh, strange crash but either way he's in the pits his race done is gavin sadler as we get ready to go once again yep take number two didn't quite go to plan on the first attempt but uh, this should be a pretty good restart. We'll see who gets the jump. It was a good start from uh, both of our leaders there. Very, very even the first time around. Second time around, it's going to be a lot more interesting. They both know each other's tactics a little bit more. And uh, it's going to be Jordan Charge versus Ryan Gordon out front, rounding three and four. And here we go. It's a good start. It's time for the race. Oh, it's cleared the field. Straight away, that outside groove. Grooving its worth right now. Jordan Charge trying to hold on on the inside, the number five of James oh, Rice. Big crash at the background. Got another caution. Who was involved in that crash? I'm trying to have a look. Replays are always fun in this kind of thing, but uh, looks like it was Gavin Sadler again, potentially. He's in the pits, so definitely wasn't Sadler. I love replays in this practice mode. So much fun for eye racing. Please make this happen. Maybe the 51? I'm not sure. I'll try and get back to you on that one, but... Uh, you can see the car. Right. I just can't quite pick up the number. Yep, 51 of Bob King. Ah, Bob King. Okay. Finally got it. Actually contact between the 51 and the 56 as they come across the start line and ping then into the inside fence. And race done for him. We go green once again. Jordan Charge now on the inside for the restart. Go straight to the outside. He's now going to try and work again. He passed the five of James Rice. He's now come up high and taken that second position away. Ryan Gordon had an absolutely fantastic launch and you easily rocketed car lines ahead of the field but already the number five car is uh, really beginning to put in some work. He's uh, closing up quite a lot. So James Rice, very, very quick. And we also have to look behind as well. The triple six there of Lewis Hewitt Ooh. is beginning to monster the back there of Jordan Charge in that 60 Synergy Sim Racing car. And he's going to slide up the track almost into the side of Jordan Charge there. But at that triple six, it looks like it has a lot of pace over here. Yo, oh, contact squeezed six. into the wall. Triple six almost riding the walls around this uh, Lanier Speedway. But the caution was called before that as well. So chaos everywhere in heat number four. Yeah, I did see we were on board looking from the back from James Russell's car. I could see in the distance there was an accident. I couldn't quite work out who it was. We see the replay between Rice, I uh, saw between Hewitt and Charge. 
car was stopped just up there on the track. And we're struggling to work out numbers of cars involved in incidents in this event because we don't have our normal live timing. We're making it work as well as we can. So Pace Car has been ordered to uh, come into the pits at the end of this lap and Ryan Gordon absolutely flew away from the field in that last restart. He's having a lot of practice on the restarts tonight and uh, that was an odd one. Race, race got restarted, Pace Car still wanted to come out and play for a little bit. Yeah, Pace Car wasn't ready, the, the rest of the field was ready, but Pace Car was still on the track. And we'll go again this time. Yeah, I'm pace... sorry Mr. Chevrolet, but no matter how hard you try, you're not a sprint car, yeah. so please stop. Yeah. Yeah. Get back in the pits, you're not in this race. Take two, or take three, or is it four? I don't even know anymore. I'm not sure numbers go that high, Jay, but <laughs> I need to take my is, shoes off. We're we about go. to get a Ryan Gordon once again flying away. One of the cars back in the field, taking a very early jump to try and gain positions. The yep. number five sticking to that oh. low line while everyone else seems to go high, but Tim Harris around. has looped it, clipped the front on the inside wall and he looped it around. We saw that live, Tim Harris. He was the driver that shot to the inside to try and get something happening. Then he just clipped the front nose or the front wing on the wall coming through turns one and two after the restart. It's actually gripped it up on that bit of dirt right on the inside. It actually gripped up for him and uh, shot him around into the fence so we go back live once again we get ready to go I was joking about the uh, Chevrolet not being in this race but he might as well be at this I think point it's led the most the laps now of, same amount of mileage <laughs> better but, make sure uh, they refuel it <laughs> but he's running away now he's scared and he should be because there is many many thousands of horsepower ready to be unleashed behind him Ryan Gordon he's got pretty good at this whole restarting thing so We'll see how he goes on this attempt, and once again, oh, good jump. away from the number five. He had no chance. Look at this inside line working, though, for James Rice. Not many drivers are making it work, but Rice definitely is. Awesome shot on board. Looking back at Rice, you can see over his shoulder, there's the cars trying to come up at him. But have a look at the gain that Rice has got. He's pretty much contending for the lead now. So close, but we have the white flag now out, and uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to be able to happen for him. But in the background, Lewis Hewitt switching to the outside line, and he's going to be taking a race on Oz one and three. So a good result from them. As uh, there's a few crashes across the start finish line, I think a few people quite happy to get heat number four over because <laughs> uh, there was a bit of chaos in that one. That was a tough heat for sure. Seeing the replay of Hewitt able to get it done right at the end of the race over Jordan Charge good move to come back high through 3 and 4 for the final time to be able to hold on to that position we await the heat results and then we will bring them to you on screen see now the groove was two defined grooves in the track now, a very low line and a very high line. That middle, somewhere you do not want to go now. We might do while we wait for these results. We'll take a very, very quick break. Thanks to our sponsors of this event, Harvey Bay Auto Glass. We'll be back in just a few seconds. Harvey Bay Auto Glass is your local 24-7 mobile service. For replacement glass for all vehicles, including cars, trucks and heavy machinery, plus chip and crack repairs and window regulator repairs, call Harvey Bay Auto Glass. We come to you. We are back. I said it was a very, very quick break. Bo didn't believe me when I said it was going to be very, very quick. I was, I was pretty disappointed. I mean, I had my deck chair ready. I had my little my little drink ready with a little umbrella in it. And well, that's all gone to waste in the sink. And we're going to be back for 410 sprint car racing, but that's not so bad, is it? We've got heat number five coming up and uh, well, we've got some even quicker drivers in here. It's going to get even better, even faster. 
and uh, the action even more intense. Results from heat number four on screen at the moment. Right on cue, I'll take them away and I'll update them for heat number five. A pretty good heat, as you just said, though. Uh, some pretty quick guys in there for this one. Actually, we've said that in every heat. There's quick guys in every heat we've got tonight, so it's good that we've got that. We've had previous races that we've broadcast where there hasn't been too much action, but in this one, we've had plenty, which is great to see. That's what we really look forward to when we bring these events to you. James Robbie, Nathan Britton, Jock Goodyear, Scott Butler, Daniel Gow, Joel Berkeley, Dylan Smith, Alan Taken, uh, Dylan Sharman, and Steve Cass. For this heat, heat number five. Like you're saying, you know it's a good event when we have a uh, wheel banging on the formation laps. Uh, so <laughs> one of the ERT cars and the Roos cars getting very friendly with each other. Just, uh, hello, how are you doing? Ready for the race? We'll see how this one goes, but uh, out the front, we have Nathan Britt in there and uh, he's going to be number two on the grid with James Robbie leading the field away. And uh, we have some very quick guys further down in the pack, like Dylan Sharman, one of the uh, top qualifiers. Green flag's cold. He's going to have to come from last, but look at Jock Goodyear. He's got a fantastic launch, and he's going straight to the inside. We have a cut in the wall already. Yep, and we get caution out. Interested to see whether it's a restart, a full restart, or whether they maintain positions, because that was a great jump from third to first for Jock Goodyear. It looks like they're getting back into formation once again. I'm not too sure who that was that crashed back in the field, though. That was uh, Scott Butler for Race on Oz. And he uh, got together with one of the TTL cars, I think it was. So uh, a bit of rubbing his racing and a bit more than rubbing as he was upside down. But uh, who doesn't like a heat with a bit of chaos to kick things off? Uh, always good fun. Not a good result, though, for Butler because that uh, was a pretty big hit for Butler. So that's almost night done. Got a B main to come for him because it's going to be very tough for him to make the A main after this dnf well first things first we hope he's okay he'll be taken to the uh, infield care center just to be given a check over and we'll see if he can be brought back for the uh, b main grid but uh for now we have some very quick guys out on the track doing their pace laps and pace car is getting informed very very soon to reel his way off the grid but uh, judging by the looks of it, we're going to be continuing from where we were. We're not going to be doing a full restart. Yep, they, they were pretty much coming up to the start line that next lap around. So, uh, good for Goodyear because he got a great jump. Gained the two spots through turns one and two on the first lap. We are getting ready to start lap number two. Yeah, Valtteri Bottas spec start for Jock Goodyear. Just predicted the start instantly and straight into the lead but uh, i'm not sure the 41 car and all the others behind are going to be too happy about that they might want to get their entitled lead back but they're gonna have to earn it because that's a fantastic launch from jock goodyear as he flies away from the field yeah great restart there jumped at the perfect moment but back in the field shaman's already gained quite a few spots past half the field already the 911 of smith and shaman they're side by side shaman trying to work that inside groove and he might actually be able to get it done. But he's, got, he's got his mirrors, or well, there's a bit of a lack of mirrors in these 410 sprint cars, but he has all four corners covered by TTL cars with Joel Berkeley right on the backside as well. As the 91 slow on the inside, and that's going to allow Smith oh, to go 41 right around in the, the outside. Wall. We have the 41 in the wall, and he's going to collect the TTL car. Joel Berkeley up and over. That was a big hit. Up price racing replay of that. We see the 41 it's slow up through the start of the corner. Just clip the wall and then the nine of Berkeley. Nowhere to go. Running the natural line and made contact. He also would have been blinded by the 911 ahead of Smith, too. He wouldn't have even seen that car there. hopeless moments where you're following another car you've got your vision completely blocked and then they quickly dart to one side you're not sure why and then you unfortunately very quickly realize why they have darted to one direction and it's all a bit late 
So uh, not much you can do in those situations, and uh, you just got to hope that he is okay. Like you said, a huge hit, but uh, that car's been taken away now. Repairs to the circuit have been done, and uh, safety car pulling into the pits. And Look John Goodyear, jump. that was an interesting start. Oh, the teammates, was that? Gow and Britain, contact between them. Gow's disappeared as well, and returns right on cue, and back in making contact with Smith as well. And Sharman's made his way up into third. Good run from Sharman. And he's checking out from the guys behind. Lachlan Smith still battling, but he's now consolidating his fourth position. Jock Goodyear at the moment, a massive lead. Yep, Goodyear has checked out, but uh, there's some good battling happening in the midfield there. As we saw just before, Nathan Britton making a big power move there on uh, the 91 TTL car, uh, who has managed to recover from that crash. He hasn't got too much damage, so he's still floating around out on the track, which is always good, but yeah, it's getting very interesting out the front as Joe Goodyear uh, managed to get a fantastic jump and is holding onto that well, but it's not quite over yet for second. It's definitely not. Shaman's got some really good pace as oh. we get up towards the last components of this race. Head the 22 of Gao, starting to make a couple of errors too. Can't be long to go now. A oh, big, big crash. Yep, that was Joel Berkeley. A huge hit. And uh, that was involving Alan Tacken as well. So multiple cars involved. And that was a monster hit. Looks like the race may be given as a result oh. there. That was big in the wall for Berkeley and then he got it back underway and he's just looped it all himself that power we were talking about before then stuck in the middle of the track and then contact Alan Tacken as well making contact we are go back live that is race done cars have pulled back into the pits and we've only got one heat left to go yep one heat left to go but there's some uh, big names in there, some of the quickest qualifiers, and even some colleagues of ours with Cam Dance, the man going to be starting on pole position. So uh, he was last in uh, his first heat. He's going to be on pole for the second. So he's got a pretty nice average going there. But uh, he's going to be joined on the front row from Aaron Wilton. Uh, behind him is going to be Brenton Hobson and Josh Rogers, two very, very quick guys on the dirt. Uh, fifth and sixth is going to be fielded by Josh Harm and Brad Cooper. 7th and 8th is going to be Zach Masters and your number one qualifier, Tim Ryan, who uh, hopefully has some electrical gremlins with that ERT car all fixed with uh, Brandon Schultz and your previous race winner, Cam Holler, uh, in 9th and 10th. Starting order for heat number 6 on screen right now. We'll get the results from heat 5 up on screen as soon as we have them available. But, uh, heat 5 was pretty good, so we've had... Five really interesting heats. I've only got three races to go, plus the pole shuffle. Night's flying by. It is, but we're starting to get into the really juicy stuff, the stuff that we're all waiting for, and the stuff where it is all going to go off. Some of these dirt tracks have fireworks that happen after the race. Well, these 410 sprint cars are having fireworks go off all race long. waiting for the heat results to come up so that I can put them up on the screen for you. Of course, big thanks to Harvey Bay Auto Glass for their support of this event. They're very good sponsors. You can't have good events. So big thank you to the guys at Harvey Bay Auto Glass for their support of the 410 Sprint Car Grand Slam. Results are pretty much done. I have them confirmed so I can put them up on the screen. Look at that, just like magic, they appear. The Jock Goodyear confirmed as the winner from Daniel Gow. Dylan Sharman, probably another two laps, and he might have got second place in the end there, but wasn't quite able to do so. Lachlan Smith 
in fourth, Alan Tack in fifth, and Steve Cass, Nathan Britton, Joel Berkeley, James Roddy, Robbie, and Scott Butler did not finish that last race. Another interesting heat. As you said, we've got some good drivers in this one again. Of course, a reverse grid from what we saw for heat number three. Uh, Cameron Holler picked up the win from position one in the last heat. Of course, this one is starting way back in 10th. So, see what comes from this for him this time around. Same also applies for Cam Dance. He was uh, at the back in the last one. Now he has an opportunity out the front. So he'll be looking to make due on his new experience out the front of this field. And uh, he's a very quick driver in these 410s. So he has a very, very good shot, as good as anyone else, to uh, hold that lead and uh, run away with a nice heat six victory. But uh, with some very quick guys, such as Aaron Wilton, Brenton Hobson, and Josh Rogers just behind, uh, he will have to work and he will have to break a sweat if he wants to hold on to it. But uh, you know, he's got good, he's got to, uh, good tools underneath him with the uh, TTL car, and uh, he's got as good a chance as anyone, and he's now heading out of the pit lane, as are the other nine 410 sprint cars, to uh, get this final heat underway before we get into the big stuff. Yep, so straight after this, we'll see the top six in your pole shuffle. We'll have the B main. 25 laps for the B main. Top six from the B main will transfer over to the A main. 18 cars in for a 40 lap race. I believe originally it was going to be 50 laps. They've brought that down to 40. A few drivers were very concerned on the fuel numbers with a 40 lap race. Uh, not quite as difficult now, but fuel strategy will definitely come into play. Of course, you can't refill these cars when you're out on track. That's it. You need to pit, you can't refuel it. So you want to make sure that you've got it right from the get go. That's uh, one thing at ERT we do not let uh, one of our drivers, Tim Ryan, forget. He uh, has a bit of a history, dare we say, of uh, running out of fuel. So uh, he'll be definitely under uh, close scrutiny from the team to make sure he has enough fuel uh, in that car. But uh, it's not so much an issue for these smaller heat races. That more so comes in when we get the big 40 lap races at the end. But uh, if he runs out of fuel tonight, he's going to get a bit of a copping in the uh, ERT chat. I can assure you of that. But... For now, pace car rolling off the grid. It's under Cam Dance's control when the pace car pulls off. It'll be another very interesting heat. So Dance go from 10th to 6th the last time around. We saw Hobson go from 8th to 4th. Josh Harm from 6th to 3rd. Front two remain the same. Tim Ryan, of course, the DNF, as you said. We had those issues where he couldn't get the car restarted when the safety car or when the safety truck came out under caution uh, speaking of it pulls away and we get ready to get this race under green conditions the outside row jump. outside row is absolutely left behind contact between Wilton and a few other drivers and Josh Rogers has made his way through on that outside row but up the front it's going to be Brenton Hobson. He's absolutely launched from the second roll of the grid as we have a huge crash. TTL cars involved. Three cars in total involved. And uh, it all got very interesting through turns one and two. That all started from that initial jump at the start. So Wilton and Rogers on the outside row. Big check up. There was actually a car that pretty much made it with three wide being the, the 95 of Zach Masters thought about making it three wide right at the start he then come up the track I believe he's been involved in this one as well yeah contact between Masters and Wilton and then Rogers nowhere to go and then the 093 also involved and that's Brad Cooper so the drivers shake themselves down like get ready to go again and it looks like all the cars are able to restart albeit some looking a little bit second hand yeah, there's some interesting aero kits going ahead on a few of these sprint cars. Definitely not a regular regulation. But uh, it's all going to be under the control of Brenton Hobson once this uh, gets going. So 
can dance. He may have started on pole, but brilliant reaction times from Hobbo there to absolutely nail the start. And uh, like you say, with that outside line just not going, not getting the reaction time, uh, that's a fantastic start for him, and that's exactly what he would have wanted, but now Cam Dance, he has a target right in front of him, he's going to have that uh, missiles locked on that TTL car, and uh, he'll be hoping for some pretty big moves uh, the longer this race goes on. Here we go. The control of the 88 of Brenton Hobson, away he goes, good jump. Front four have all gone with him though. The rest of the field's been left behind. Oh, Hobson's into the fence. Big, big crash at the front of the field. Hobson around. And that's heartbreaking for Hobson. Just clipped the inside wall at the race at the start. Coming through turns one and two. Got a great jump, but then just contact into the wall. It was a bit strange. Then the TTL cars behind had nowhere to go, but straight over the top of Hobson, and he'll drop back to last position for this next restart. Yes, well, front's going to be Cam Dance, but uh, that front bumper, or well, whatever you want to call it, on that sprint car is not looking as good as it used to be. Copped a pretty hefty whack when it came with a came to Brenton Hobson, just stopping in front of him after clipping the inside wall. So uh, it's looking good for Cam Dance if you don't look at the front bumper. Pace car comes in, but uh, with his teammate right behind him, we're about to see in equal cars just how much that damage may hurt him. Yeah, and they'll be working together in their own voice communications in the team to make sure that they get the best possible Oh, jump. Tim Ryan! Fantastic launch! He goes straight from fourth to second! Under pressure already, though, from the 11 of Josh Harm, but... Tim Ryan with an absolutely fantastic launch and uh, he's played himself into a huge contender all of a sudden after starting last in this heat. Yeah, all the way up into third. Great start. A restart there for Ryan. But it's the TTL cars of Cameron Dance and the 11. Josh Harm and Harm and Ryan side by side across the finish line. Not many laps to go. Had a fair few laps under caution, which obviously do not count as well, so. And through comes the ERT car. And have a look at Dance. He's really struggling around the outside. Ryan's going to get them both. Dance up to cover. Contact. Oh. Big, big crash. They continue on. How did they hold that? That was incredible. All three interlocking wheels. That should have been a monster crash. But somehow they're still one, two, and three, unless that car Brandon just Schultz. behind the Hogwarts car yep. has a shot. But right now, this is crazy stuff. Cam Dance holds onto the race lead. They're oh, contact between Dance. Dance is out of the race. Dance has been hit by the 25 as he come past a lap. Caution and then the throw. whole heap of cars involved. That was huge. Jump on board for a replay on board with Cameron Dance. You'll see lap car, I believe it's Wilton. Just a little bit slower. He's not quite able to get out of the way. He's struggling for group himself. And then contact, wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact. And around goes half the field. Go back live. Jim Ryan now, your race leader. Last to first. Yeah, that's an awesome result for Tim Ryan so far, but hey, the checkered flag isn't out yet. There's still a long way to go, and uh, Josh Harm in that TTL car right behind is going to be pretty hungry to uh, stop that last the first effort from Tim Ryan. And uh, we've seen how quick they are. They do tend to use different lines as well, so we're going to get a very interesting restart if Josh Harm can hook onto the back of the ERT car. Hobson's been able to recover, and he's got himself back up into fifth as we get ready to go. Oh, oh. Look at that, nose to tail contacts as we get underway on the restart. Everyone very eager to get underway. Yeah, Hobson and Dance both get through. Hobson up to fourth, Dance back up to fifth already after restarting back in last and checking out at the front of the field. Tim Ryan, he's gone. So 
hearing the checkered flag being dropped any time. So if you're going to make a move, it has to be now. Yep, and done. unfortunately, that was the last lap there. So Tim Ryan is going to take that victory there ahead of the 93 car. And, uh, well, that race had its twists and turns. Sure did. Great restart at the end there for Tim Ryan. So from 8th to 1st in that one. Josh Harm in 2nd. Brandon Schultz in 3rd position. Now we just wait for the points to all be tallied. Then we will have our field set for the rest of the night. But uh, so far, it's been some fun racing. Sure has, and we're about to get into the very serious stuff. And uh, it's going to get very interesting as we head into the big events now, including the pole shuffle races, B main, and then, of course, the big one at the end. So uh, make sure you're sitting down. Make sure you've got some food, some drinks, and everything, because uh, it's about to get very interesting very quickly. The official results from that heat up on screen right now. How's that sound? I reckon right now is about the right time to do it. If I don't click the wrong, wrong button, we can do it. Go. Tim Ryan, Josh Harm, Brandon Schultz, Bretton Hobson, Cameron Dance, Zach Masters, Cameron Holler, Brad Cooper, and Aaron Wilton with Josh Rogers DNFing that one. Unfortunate for him, but he will be out there for at least one more event. Waiting for the actual positions to be calculated, all the points to be added up, so that we can confirm who is in which position. But Tim Ryan will finish with 300 points, two wins and a DNF. So the DNF is going to hurt him in regards to that situation. What I can see in regards to the points... Josh Harm will be position one. No, sorry, Brandon Schultz will be position one on 422 points. 418 for Josh Harm. The track looking very, very tough right now with our... Warning it is, there's no group out there at all at the moment. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens when we get into these events. Of course, plenty of raceway. Awesome little track. It's definitely a nice little new addition to add to the uh, dirt car circus. Because, uh, of course, we did only have a handful of tracks for so, so long. And uh, this is a nice new challenge for the guys. A new setup challenges, new mud terrain and dirt terrain. So uh, plenty happening around this uh, very, very small circuit. Might only be uh, 600 meters in length, but uh, definitely packs more than 600 races of action. And I've already seen that tonight with so much happening. As uh, the point's still getting calculated to work out our field. But with some big names getting some DNFs in there, some... Uh, surprise results as well. We're going to have some very interesting results from for both the uh, B main and the A main. Yeah, it'll be very, very interesting. Of course, Lanier, if you didn't know, Lanier is actually the uh, the oval track that is right next door to Road Atlanta. If you actually look hard enough, you can see it in the background at Road Atlanta in iRacing. There's a little... Little fun fact for you. We always in love a fun VAs, fact. In the VS Online uh, Discord, sometimes we're often doing little challenges like, um, you know, try and work out what track it is from a small little screenshot. That would be a good one to throw some people off, Jay. Uh, when we did that the other day and I actually had that little headstone from Road Atlanta, I thought uh, maybe I should uh, chuck the oval up in the background that you can sort of see and see if anyone would get it. There's not too many that are. Side by side, you can obviously see the bull ring from the Texas Better Speedway and vice versa, but uh, this one, and I think Mossboard Oval as well, you can see too as we get ready for the pole shuffle. Dylan Sharman will be sixth out on track.
There we go. Looks like we might have our B main grid sorted and pole shuffles now coming along. So got some progress happening at the yep. moment and uh, we should be able to get those results to you pretty shortly. Yep, we'll get all the, the grids up on screen when we can. Currently, uh, Stephen Lattimore in the uh, pace truck, having some fun doing some circle work. Hey, what well, it would be pretty good fun being out there in that. I think uh, maybe next time we do one of these events, I might put my hand up and drive the pace truck. <laughs> what don't you think I'd be good at it? <laughs> I'd be I will... I'd be hopeless at it. I'd be crashing too much. Everyone that's watching that knows me would be like, "Yeah, you would be too." So. I mean, as a pace car driver, you only have to drive around at like 60 kilometers an hour, but I'm not sure you're actually capable of even that speed. So Ooh, hang on, hang perhaps on. leave it to the pros, <laughs> <laughs> the 60 kilometers an hour pros. Well, um, it'd be interesting to have this discussion after we uh, see whether you can complete the Bathurst 1000 over the weekend. That'll be uh, mm -hmm. a bit of a challenge. Oh boy. <laughs> what have you got yourself into? Oh, I know. Well, I was actually pretty disappointed because uh, I jumped in the V8 supercar for the first time expecting good things, pressed the headlight button and oh, what I don't know if it was just a, sh a short circuit or something, but <laughs> Brent and O'Brien, I've got some complaints for you, mate. Your cars are broken. Need some <laughs> headlights, mate. Uh, it'll be a very, very fun race. The 161 laps coming up on the weekend, Saturday from 6.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time for qualifying top 15 shootout. And then on Sunday, the big one, we'll start our coverage from 11.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time of the MR Porsche Super Cup. A little bit of a pre-race show. And then we will get underway for the Bathurst 1000 race start around about 1 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time for 161 laps. And we can confirm there will be no time certain finish. We will run the whole 161, so it will be a Bathurst 1000. Someone asked me earlier today if there'd be any time certainty. I said the only certainty around time would be that everyone will have a good time. That's a good one, isn't it? Although you might not if you crash. You. I don't want to know you. Why am I in this commentary booth with you? <laughs> that was bad, wasn't it? It was good, I thought. <laughs> but no, it'll be a fantastic event. And uh, if you don't get the chance to race, then definitely be around in the YouTube chat and all of that good stuff because it's going to be fun no matter where you're sitting, whether it's the driver's seat, the spectator's seat, or even the spotter's seat. It's uh, going to be a fantastic one. And uh, with only two days and 14 hours to go, we're getting pretty pumped here at Beards Online. Yep, six versus fifth here. So Lachlan Smith versus Ryan Harris. Harris has selected the outside row, being fifth position, higher position. He does get to choose. Two lap race for this one. After this, we will see Bob King take on the winner, who's finished fourth overall. Points so far as we get ready to get underway. Here we go. Good launch and have a look at the jump. Oh, big, big oh. contact into the wall goes Harris. And he's done. That was a big hit from Harris. That's all over before the race has barely started. Harris couldn't get any grip. He just wheel spin. And on the inside, Smith got a great run as the green light was lit. Harris just clipped that wall. We've seen that take a few guys out. Turn one, that little bit of wall sticks its way out. Turn one. Harris is done and he will start from sixth position in the main event. Bob King now takes on Lachlan Smith. We'll uh, see if we can get a slightly longer race happening for you guys. And uh, hopefully we have a nice battle between these two because two very quick guys, very competitive, very good racecraft. 
But uh, let's see how this goes as we get ready for the second of these races. It's going to be Lucky Smith versus your man, Bob King. Let's see how the launch goes as King. we're getting the green on this lap. King's taken the outside as his option as well, so two from two on the outside. We'll see if that pays a bit better dividends this time. Between Bob King and Lachlan Smith. Whole shuffle. Good fun little battles these. I always enjoy the little two lap dashes. So we get ready to go. Better jump this time on the outside. Smith, though, he's going to make this inside work, is he? Bogged down a little bit too much. Coming through turn two, through three and four. It looks a little bit better on the inside for Smith, but King is away. One more lap to go. Smith has moved up to the high side. He's realized that that's the place to be, but it's just too little, too late. Bob King with a fantastic work. Picking that outside line. Ran it perfectly. No mistakes. Great restart. And uh, he's gone through to the next one. Yep, so Josh Harm comes out next. Harm versus King. And I'm going to guess that Harm will pick the outside as well. I don't think the inside line is completely done yet. No, there's definitely potential down there. It's a, just, it's a slightly riskier line because you don't want to get into that black stuff because then all kinds of traction just goes out the window. But for those brave enough, those that want to risk it, they can in fact make it work. And I'm just going to try. This, inside's been chosen there from Josh Harm. Going green on the next one. But, uh, you know, it's a bold choice. But if he can make this work, this is going to change the ball game through everyone's thoughts for the uh, rest of the lane choices. If one person can make it work, everyone can make it work. It's just, are they brave enough to pull it off? We're about to see if Josh Harm made the right choice or if it was all in vain. Green's been called. Have a look at the outside straight away. We're back straight in the middle groove there, a little bit for King. And this is pretty close between King and Harm this time. This race is a bit closer. And Harm is through, clear at the moment. One to go. I'm surprised that uh, Bob King not actually getting the exits on Harm as well. I thought he'd have a much more compromised oh. line, but Josh Harm, there he goes, he's taken it. And uh, big slide from Bob right, King race. there, but it's all over. That was, a, that was a fantastic lane choice from Josh Harm. Nailed the race perfectly, and a uh, bit of an upset win there on the inside line. So now Brendan Schultz uh, getting the call uh, the call up. So he's been given lane choice. 93 trundling around the inside pit lane. Now rejoins the circuit, and this is where we'll see if he goes inside or outside. And it would appear... Outside. Outside. Yep. I don't think Harm will be too upset in that decision, too. That could also be a ploy you could play against your opponent. Even if it's not your preferred line, make sure you get them on their non-preferred line. So Josh Harm liking that inside... If, even if someone doesn't potentially like the inside, they could uh, force Josh onto that outside line just to force him into a bit of an unknown playing field. That is a strategy you can potentially play, but uh, as the two roll around at 60 kilometers an hour, the TTL versus the Hog's Breath Cafe car, it's uh, going to get very, very interesting on this restart. Who gets the jump? Waiting for the green flag to be called, which has happened right now. And they're underway. Squeeze to the outside wall. Josh Harm providing a very, very aggressive move. But look at that outside line getting a fantastic launch off of the corners. Josh Harm, fantastic into the corners. But once again, on the exit, it's just all the 93 show. So much more straight line speed, and there's nothing the TTL car can do. He's quick through the corners, but once again, runs away. And now, as we oh. head to the line, Josh Harm with the oh. slide jump. Oh, that be was enough. close. That was so nearly an amazing move there. Very close from Josh Harm. Great attempt. Try and pull something off there, but... Not quite able to do it, so Schultz moves through, 
Dylan Sharman will be the next driver out. And the last driver to decide the lane. This will decide our pole sitter. We will decide, decide our pole man for tonight's A main. So next we will have the B main. Sharman is looking like he's going on the outside. So both these guys wanting the outside, but of course Sharman with the preference is going to get it. We're going to go green at the end of this lap. So they're trundling around now at the boring 60 kilometers an hour, but it's going to get very, very uh, loud very quickly as they accelerate up to 190 kilometers an hour when the green flag drops, which is all under Benjamin J. Smith's control. He's doing the race control for us tonight and doing a fantastic job at it, letting everyone know when it's their time to go and when it's not their time to go. But right now, Dylan Sharman is waiting on Ben's call to get that green flag going, which has happened now, and it's an even start. Yeah, not a bad start from the inside line there of Schultz. He might actually be able to come across and cover over Sharman. And Schultz now has the advantage because he's now holding the outside line, has a clear run on Dylan Sharman. So Sharman now has to try and make something magical happen here to make this move back. Cuts back to the inside. Don't think it's going to work, though. And Schultz will take the win in the final pole shuffle race. Second position goes to Dylan Charman. Third, Josh Harm, Bob King, Ryan Harrison, Lachlan Smith. So a couple of swaps of position there. That one, which is good. All right, well, we've seen some interesting things in that that are going to tell us a lot when it comes to the B main grid, which is uh, coming up very, very soon. It's going to be a 25-lap race, but that inside line, it's risky, but it's not impossible. You can push it and make it work. So we saw uh, a few times there the inside line did actually work as we've got the grid on screen. Tim Harris, James Rice on the front row, then Brad Cooper, Cameron Dance, Brent Hobbs, and James Robbie, Tim Ryan, Nathan Britton, Zach Masters, Steve Cass, Scott Goodyear, Alan Tarkin, Darren Parameter, Josh Rogers, Gavin Sadler, Scott Butler, Aaron Winton, and Joel Berkeley. The 18 cars in this race, which should be a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be, and there's a lot of pressure on this one. If you're not in that top six, you go home after this one. So uh, there's a lot of pressure on this, and a lot of guys will feel like they deserve better than to be in the B-Man grid. You've got some of the top qualifiers in there including Tim Ryan. You've got Joel Berkeley, Josh Rogers. Uh, Jock Goodyear was an incredibly quick driver in some of the heat races as well. Camp Dance, Brenton Hobson, just to name a handful of the very talented 18 guys we've got in this B-Man grid. But unfortunately for them, from this race, there's only six available spots to get into that A-Main. Biggest name that we're probably shocked to see in here is Joel Berkeley, ninth fastest, uh, sorry, third fastest time uh, qualifying earlier found himself last on the grid the only points he's got is from qualifying which is amazing two dnfs so uh if he can pull out a finish uh, i'm sure that will be some sort of positional improvement for him so we wait the last couple of drivers to come out onto the track take the field before we get b main underway here in the Harvey Bay, Auto Glass, 410 Grand Slam. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in. It's been very, very fun so far. Just on uh, Joel Berkeley as well. Uh, starting last in this B main, it's a 25 lap race. He obviously has to get inside that magic sixth position. So on average, he's going to have to be passing at least one car every two laps. And you know, with the guys we have in this field, that's not going to be an easy task. So uh, he's going to have to go on max attack, and uh, he can't leave anything on the table. It's either, you know, perform the goods now or go home yep. as the cars are rolling. It's a win it or bin it situation, and I think he will have that exact attitude. He'll be going absolutely all out, leaving nothing on the table to try and potentially take a win away. Uh, up the front, Tim Harris finds himself in... Pretty much the ideal position at the moment to try and make his way into the main. The A main tonight. James Rice alongside as the pace truck pulls away and we get ready to go. So it's now all under Tim Harris's control. 
And look at everyone just trying to sneak past him. Almost three wide as we get the green flag done, but Tim Harris is going to get a jump, but look at it all. It's going to be single into Cooper. turn one, and there's some contact. Race on his car and an ERT car involved in a wreck. That was staying green for the moment. Race has just been called caution. Yep. And we're seeing more chaos. Oh, the 41. Crash. Second place car as well up in the air and rolling. So safety car was out and they got involved in another tangle. Bit a cut price racing replay of that from the very start. 41. No, there's an incident with the triple seven I did see. No, it wasn't the triple seven. Not sure who it was involved with. The first I incident. I believe Jock Goodyear was involved in that first incident. Quickly try and get a proper look at it. Very tough uh, to, to work out what's going on, isn't it? It is. It does just look like the uh, 90, 093 car, which yeah. is a uh, Brennan. Uh, oh, no, sorry, no, the 093. Uh, it's just checked up mid-corner and uh, collected Nathan Burden and then Jock Goodyear nowhere to go in the middle of that as well. So just one of those situations where it all just sort of Constantine is a bit too much and... Uh, can't do too much about it but we have some drivers calling for a complete restart because obviously they've got quite a bit of damage it's but pretty messy too that original start of the race so interesting to see what the decision ends up being here berkeley's ended up ahead of a couple of drivers one lap in and he's already passed two his aim. Run away again. Here we go. Up the front, Tim Harris. And then it's Cameron Dance in P2. Coming Look around it. the outside, the 98. That's a great bit of driving. Tim Ryan. He's going to get this done on Dance. He moves up into third. Dance back to fourth. Safety car's out. Another caution. Hobson up into second too. So it's all shuffling around at the front of the field. Brad Cooper, I believe, was involved in that one because he just disappeared off the timing sheets. Not too sure. pick up as to why we had a caution come out there oh there we go i can see there's a big wreck on the back straight but i can't quite see who was involved yep fortunately no luck here either there was a wreck on the back straight i do know that i can confirm that if Britain may have been involved because he's come back into the pits. But the attention now switches back to this restart. Benjamin Smith giving the call that we'll be going green at the end of this lap. So we should see the pace car run away at any point as he does now. So it's back in the control there of Tim Harris, the 48 car. And uh, look at Hobbo, here's uh, already he's trying to position himself, trying to get a jump on this restart. And uh, Tim Ryan and Cam Dance just behind as well. Tim Ryan with a bit of a gap as well, so potentially going for a bit of a run-up, but it's too late for that as Tim Harris floors it and gets a brilliant restart. Hobbo had no chance as Ryan with a big slide almost into the door of uh, Brenton Hobson. So very, very close racing at the front. Front six are pulled away from the rest of the field. We're watching the transfer spot at the moment. This is battle for fifth and six. And they've pulled away from the rest. 55, Stephen Cass, and the 77, Jock Udja. And behind them, there's a fair bit of contact into the wall. One of the race on Oscars wasn't quite sure who that was, but as it stands right now, Stephen Cass is in sixth position and is your last transfer spot. Oh, Cam Dance into the wall, hard contact. 
He's still going, but that might have put the steering out a little bit, and that's not going to help him in any way, shape, or form. And Stephen Cass immediately oh. on the aggressive as we've got Joshua Rogers riding the wall. He almost held it, but he's going to collect the number nine teammate as well. He's going to try and continue, but that's all a bit messy. Pace car stays out, uh, stays in the pits. Josh Rogers, incredible damage. He's not going to be able to hold on. And he's just creating a bit of a mess of the field at the moment, but it's still green. But now, I've just seeing a car spin. Masters in the 25 of Aaron Hinton, but it continues on. Joel Berkeley in the 9. He's moved himself into 7th. He's not far away from getting himself up into the transfer spot. Right now, the 55 and the 6 battle on for 6th position. 5th and 6 is on screen. Then the 55 of Cass and the 6 Cameron Dance. Berkeley giving it everything he's got, getting to the wall and some as he's trying to hunt down Dance, who's currently in that magical position. And uh, he's fighting pretty hard against Cass, who's doing a brilliant defensive job at the moment. Remember, this is a much longer race than the ones we've seen previously, so there's more fuel. The car's going to handle differently. They've probably got different wing settings. Everything's probably different in these sprint cars. They're so sensitive to every adjustment you make. And Cam Dance, we saw he had big contact against the wall before, and he's slowly beginning to drop away from Cass. And look at Berkeley behind, trying to make gains. Yeah, Berkeley's starting to close up fairly quickly. Last lap around 12-7. Uh, Cameron Dance into the 13. So a little bit off the pace at the moment is Cameron Dance in comparison to his teammate Berkeley, who is catching fairly quickly at the moment. Only about two seconds back. Berkeley is on a wild ride at the moment on board. See, he's absolutely out of control. The pace car is out. We are under caution. hearing is a few cars lap down in this event as well so they're going to be cycled through when the pace car does eventually uh, cleanse the field so that's good news for us it means we get good racing uh, now but all the eyes have to be on cam dance because with a slightly wounded TTL car and the field now closed that safety net he did have over his teammate well it's gone it doesn't exist anymore and Joel Berkeley is right there waiting to take away that transfer spot so Brenton Hobson leads the race now. 90 out of Tim Ryan in P2, then Jock Goodyear in third. Fourth is the 48 of Tim Harris. Fifth, the 55 of Stephen Cass. And then sixth is Cameron Dance. Seventh is the number nine of Joel Berkeley. This is going to be an interesting restart. And the 95 also now in this too. Zach Masters. Darren Parameter and also right in there too still. One interesting thing. This restart is going to be even more intense for one reason. Six laps to go. Wowee. This is going to be a good fun restart. Under the control of Bretton Hobson in the 88 once the pace truck pulls in. Six laps. Half of one of our heat races will be over before we know. Only about a, a minute and five seconds of racing. We get ready to go. Have a look at how wide or how high they have to be to find grip. And away goes Hobson Ryan's missed the jump. And on the inside line, the 77. Got a great run. Jock Goodyear, he might get this done for second. A good start from Cam Dance and he's jumping up the order. And uh, it's all changed there with Stephen Cass having a nightmare. And he's potentially going to his transfer spot, which he's currently holding on to by the skin of his teeth. Taken away as around the outside goes Joel Berkeley trying to make it happen. Getting those beautiful exits that high line gives you. But Stephen Cass making it work on that very, very slick inside line. He has to hold on for just four more laps now. John Berkeley doing everything he can to make the high line work. Cam Dance doesn't quite have the pace with that wound to TTL car. He's struggling. He's just there in front. Potentially both his cars. Oh, in the wall. Berkeley gets into the wall, but it's not hurting him too much right now. He still has that overlap when they come onto the straights against Stephen Cass. As you can see, he does have the advantage and now he's potentially clear of Stephen Cass. And Dance is really struggling now. Yeah, Dance is under pressure here. This could be the change of transfer spot. Four oh. cars you see, only three of them will get through. And back up the inside comes Cass. Will he be able to get it done? Not long to go. This is it, this is the final corner. It's all about how you prepare this exit. 
Haas does not make it. Unfortunate for him, but through goes Berkeley from 18th to 6th. Cameron Dance holds on. The 48 of Tim Harris goes through as well. Also going through Tim Ryan, Dokuja, and winning the race, I believe, was Brenton Hobson. We did miss who won the race. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, we did, but oh, there was so much going on in that midfield. That was fantastic racing, and Tim Ryan I actually definitely did put up the win there. Ah, so well done to Tim. Uh, good to see the car not turning off on him this time, but <laughs> it makes a difference. Man, that that was some kind of race. I mean, I'd put that down as the uh, race, well, the heat of the uh, night so far. Yeah, the race of the night so far for sure. As we get ready for one more, one to go, the one that they all want to win. The go or go home race, it's uh, win it or bin it, it's the final. It's the final, and if that was just 25 laps, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to handle 40 laps. And uh, there's Get your breath in now. Breathe now before you don't get a chance, because we're not going to get much chance. Yeah, when it comes to this kind of racing and these 410s, breathing just isn't something that comes naturally. It's hard to even fathom how much action you can possibly fit into a 40 lap race we're just turning left but man these guys make it so much more than that and uh it's i can't wait for this as we have just the stacked lineup of some of the best dirt races australia and new zealand have to offer yep you summed it up perfectly there it's the absolute who's who australian and new zealand dirt sim racing we get ready for the field to be officially finalized 18 car grid is being advised to us now, so I can actually hopefully get it to come up on the screen. Hopefully. I'd just like to say a quick congratulations to uh, Stephen Lattimore. You've just crashed the safety car. Ah, uh, that's always a good result. One that we do like to see, some crash of the pace car. So the floodlights descend on Lanier National Speedway and the nerves begin to rise even more as we are about to head into the big one for the night. It's the A-Main, it's 40 laps and the absolute best drivers there are. Let's see how this kicks off. We're going to be getting it underway very, very shortly. Yeah, we're not too far away from getting this one green for 40 laps. Uh, it'll be a fairly long haul. The The... The pit, or sorry, the fuel situation for a lot of these drivers is going to be very, very tough. Uh, a few guys will have to think about what they're doing under caution, but the grid on screen for this one, Brandon Schultz from one, Dylan Sharman, Josh Harm, Bob King, Lachlan Smith, Ryan Harris, Daniel Gale, Brett Wheeler, Jordan Charge, then Ryan Gorton, Lewis Hewitt, Cameron Holler, then the transfers from the B main, we've got Tim Ryan, Jock Goodyear, Brenton Hobson, Tim Harris, Joel Berkeley, and Cameron Dance. Now that actually made something else work. That's two things I've made work tonight. <laughs> Just waiting for drivers to see final instruction. Uh, we will get the show on the road for the main event. It'll be a, a fun race. It's been a really, really fun event. I've thoroughly enjoyed it, so... Uh, about 20 minutes of racing left before we can wrap it all up. But uh, Yeah, it, a fun event and uh, well done to the guys who have put this on behind the scenes because it's not easy to run these sort of events. Yeah, not at all. And the team at Race and Oz have done a fantastic job as well as the fantastic sponsors of Herbie Bay Autoglass uh, who are a proud sponsor of both the team and this event. And uh, yeah, like I was trying to say before in the rush of it all, RaceOnOz.com. Uh, it's a fantastic website. Sim racing community like no other. And uh, if you get the chance, be sure to head onto there uh, for some fantastic racing on all platforms. Uh, everything's happening on there from uh, banter, racing, clean leagues, and the all. Um, I've been a member there for many years, so I can vouch myself that it's a fantastic place to be if you're just getting started in sim racing. And you can see that there's some very talented guys in that, uh, in that website because... I mean, we've got a few of the cars here in this A main. So uh, some very, very talented guys there, and I highly recommend it. 
course, if you are going around looking at websites, head to our website, vatsonline.com. Make sure you subscribe to us and uh, follow us on all proper social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, so uh, subscribe to our mailing list. We like it when people subscribe to our mailing list and we'll keep you up to date with everything's going on in the OzNZ iRacing Sim community, which there is always plenty. None bigger than this weekend's event. Bathurst 1000, as we said, we're counting down to it. The hype is definitely, definitely building. <laughs> All aboard the hype train with two days, 13 hours, 59 minutes and 13 seconds until the race kicks off. So Here we go. drivers now forming up onto the start finish straight for the A main. And you can imagine their nerves will be through the roof right now. This is it. Everything they've been doing tonight has been to get into this position. They're here now. All that matters now is how quickly you can get to the front of this field. And then can you stay there for the end of the race? The whole field is full of talented drivers and uh, it's going to get very, very hectic. They've just seen a couple of cars crash while they're actually trying to get into the right position. As you said earlier, it's very, very tough to drive these things at slow speeds. Because all they want to do is turn left. So actually driving them straight slowly is no way an easy thing to do. So seeing a couple of guys crash in other cars while they're trying to get themselves into their correct positions. Uh, hopefully we'll see everyone out in the right positions in the next couple of moments and we'll get this race underway. 40 laps for the A main. Forty laps indeed, and that is going to be a marathon. This is going to be essentially a twenty-four hour of Le Mans for these guys. Uh, it's not often you see these races this long in these cars, so uh, it's going to be very, very tiring on these guys. And as you were touching on before, they have to make sure they have their fuel numbers pitch perfect because this race could go green from start to finish, or it could have thirty-five cautions in forty laps. You just don't know, and uh, you have to prepare for anything. And that is a factor that will happen. Have some guys gone for a much less fuel than others? Have some gone for more? Will that affect their pace dramatically? We're all about to find out. What we might do quickly while the grid gets ready to go and takes their positions, we'll quickly take a message from our sponsors and we'll be back in just a moment. Harvey Bay Auto Glass is your local 24-7 mobile service. For replacement glass for all vehicles, including cars, trucks and heavy machinery, plus chip and crack repairs and window regulator repairs, call Harvey Bay Auto Glass. We come to you. The hype train is lit. Um, <laughs> the Bo builds up anticipation for his first ever Bathurst 1000 as the drivers come around to salute the crowd big thank you to them for putting on a great show it's made it easy for us to to put tonight on with uh how great a show they've made for us a big thanks to everyone well done big thanks to all the race admin as well because very very tough to put these events on at the best of times and to not have any timing to to know exactly what's going on is even tougher Not particularly easy, but uh, as the drivers are doing this celebrate uh, celebrity uh, parade lap, we're uh, actually I knew what you were trying to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it just wasn't happening. Yeah, for celebratory, me. I think you were trying to say. That's the one. Yeah, you know but, uh, there's no celebrities here. They're all superstars, and uh, there's actually some team support going on in the team chat. Uh, the race and Oz, who of course are behind this event, have their slogan "Fear the Ruse," and right now there's "Fear the Ruse" in the chat, but it all comes down to this restart. This is it, and we're underway Whoa. already into the wall. Our pole sitter, and that Shorts. is Kaz. We have cars on the wall on the outside as well. It's all happening. Josh Harm is making huge amounts of ground already, and there's oh, just chaos. Oh, crash everywhere. back in the field. Cameron Holler, I can see him upside down. Oh, and big pile up on the front straight. This is something out of Ricky Bobby Teldega Knights on the front straight. Chaos everywhere. Yep, we'll get a cut price racing replay because there's a fair bit to go over there. We'll go to Cameron Hollow. I do know he was involved in an incident first. 
caught up high. It's contact between the 77 and the 17, which is then pinballed into the triple one. And then the 79 of Berkeley's come through. Another green car. I can't quite work out who that was right at the back of the field that's been involved in an incident as well. Brandon Schultz, he's going to be absolutely kicking himself because he got a terrible start. Probably got too much throttle and it just uh, shot the front wheels in the air. He couldn't get any grip. Yeah, it's, it looks like it's a hard thing to pull off, but it's actually incredibly easy in these cars with the amount of power they have. Just uh, plant your foot a little bit too hard and uh, it all gets a little bit too skyward for you at times. And uh, you also got into the uh, inside wall as well. So as as far as starts go, that's about as bad as it can possibly get for you. But the good news is it doesn't look like there's too much damage to that car. It looks like it's still relatively in one piece. He is still in the top portion of the field. So uh, he, can st he still has a lot of laps too to uh, make something happen. We'll restart this one. Looks like in fifth position. Trying to just sort out positions between the 22 and the 93. Confirming who is going where. But the 93 has been told to shuffle in behind. So he's gone from first to fifth. Big loss there for Schultz after that start. So Sharman now leads... And then the 11 of his teammate, Josh Harm, in second. Then Bob King in third. Twenty-two is in fourth position. Daniel Gow. As we said, Schultz in fifth position as the pace truck pulls away. We get ready to go green. First restart, the second time. There there go, go. Good jump. Hammer's been dropped and he's run away from the rest of the field there. His teammate even not even to able to uh, go with him particularly. So fantastic launch from Harm there. And uh, but already it's beginning to close up for second a little bit there. It is Harm's under a bit of pressure now from Bob King. They're running right on that inside groove now. Sort of come back a little bit from what we saw earlier. It won't be too long before they start to move back into the middle, which you can see starting to form another groove once more. But the track is absolutely destroyed. Still in Sharman leads. The A main, 40 laps of this one. And his teammate is, is catching him. It is all happening in the midfield as we're getting door banging happening there with a uh, Ryan Harris involved there. And there is just, there was about four cars wide into turn one at one point. These guys are absolutely going for it. We see one of the Ruse cars sliding into a stall there. Yep. Mid corner, that's not good for him. But it's it is Ryan still Wolf. going too wide through these corners here. And it is all kicking off. Tim Ryan involved. It got Brenton Hobson in there as well. So a lot of big names all trying to make their way through the field. And uh, it's all getting a bit chaotic at times. Back up the front. King not quite able to get onto the back of Harm to potentially make a move. It's looking rather slow the way that they have to go around this track at the moment as they try and find some grip there's not too much of it a little bit wide here goes the ttl number 11 of harm and bob king in the 51 race on oz 410 sprint car ready to pounce but then out of it as well as we get a caution period daniel gow still in fourth position fifth position brandon schultz still and then Jordan Charge in 2-6. Not quite sure what happened back in the field. Bring out the caution. Just trying to get a number on the car, but it was a uh, green car looping it on the front straight. Not sure how they uh, have ended up around there. But uh, just trying to see who that was. It was the 56 car. So that was uh, Brett Wheeler. I'll just go back and try and find out how that's actually happened for you guys. And it looks like it's just a lose all on his own exiting uh, turn four there. And uh, just a simple loop around and uh, no real harm done. Not much damage there. So uh, just a simple position lost. And uh, he'll be able to get back up, dust himself off quite literally, and uh, make his way back through the field, hopefully. About to see the middle groove. Looks like there might be a little bit of grip there. Some guys will 
maybe be a bit adventurous back in the field. Guys at the front won't even try and risk it at this stage. They'll be going where they know there's grip. Which it looks like is right up against the inside wall. Or right up against the outside wall, which is tough line to run at the moment. Considering how wide Lanier is, you really want to try and get on the inside. Narrow the track up. Yeah, especially with how the uh, track is at the moment. There's uh, not too many lines you can actually run, but uh, Dylan Charman is running one line, and that's straight away to the check flag from that restart. He gets a beautiful jump at the 11. Quite good into turn one, quite aggressive, but he gets stuck in the slick just a little bit, which allows Bob King to close back up ever so slightly. So the uh, front bunch still very, very close, and they all seem to be favoring that inside there, but there are a few cars, cars risking it on the outside, but... Have a look at it. definitely looks so much more favorable. Have a look at the 77 trying to work through that middle groove and it is working for him. He's going to go past two cars. He's shot from eighth at the restart. He's up into fifth and fighting for sixth. We've got a battle for the lead though. Sharman is under pressure on the outside. Up on the inside is the 11 who has taken the lead in Josh Harm. 51 looks like he might get through as well. Bob King so close to actually hitting the pit wall there, all using every inch of track they possibly can. And it's not over for Bob King yet. He looks aggressive. He's on the back of the 11 and looks like he can get past that any opportunity. But look at Jock Goodyear in the 77, making that middle roof work. And he is rocketed from seventh in this field just on this restart. And he is now fighting for the win. Gets past one TTL car potentially. We've got one of our cars. Bob King just dis disappeared and he was leading the race. So Bob King is out of this race from the lead. Mechanical gremlin, internet gremlin of some sort, is taking him out of the lead of the race. Josh Harm now leads. Second is the 77 of Jock Goodyear. And third now, Dylan Charman. We approach the half race distance. That middle groove is gone once more. We have to try and find some grip back in the inside line or right up against the outside wall. Fantastic battle going on for fifth and sixth at the moment. Almost three wide as they're all squeezing towards the outside wall. We have Jordan Child and Brenton Hobson who's are sideways, almost rotating the Synergy Sim Racing sprint cars. We're seeing cars three, four, even five wide attempting at times. As we can see, the outside line working fantastically. And uh, the middle line doesn't look to be working like it used to anymore. That outside line is flying. Whoa. You can see cars. Have a look at Hobson. Hobson's gone from making it from oh. the main, oh, contact between Hobson and Berkeley. Those guys have come through from the B into the A main, and they're fighting the top five positions. Big carnage there, but it is still green. Safety car has not moved, so we're going to continue with it. <laughs> Excuse me, Josh Harm leading the way. 77, and Jock Goodyear in second. They're starting to come up in the lap traffic. Dylan Charm in third. Bob King officially out of the race. His incident has re uh, reached the point of no return. So that is disaster for the race on his car that looked like he could potentially win this race. But for now, it's going to come down to Harm and Goodyear. Third place TTL car has nothing as an answer. But now we come into traffic. And this is where everything can change so quickly. We saw it affect the heat race, the cam dance, and it so nearly affects another TTL car there. Yeah, and that's going to play into the hands of Goodyear here. He's got a great run. Cutting right down up against inside wall. Stuck in the middle groove now is Harm. Might actually be able to make it work though. Would you applying some great pressure at the moment? And he's actually getting some oh, grip contact. in the middle contact between the two race leaders. And this is going to help Sharman get back into this battle. While struggling to gain control of that ERT car, he so nearly clipped inside wall and he is going to clip the inside now. And lose second position to the other TTL car so it's all gone downhill for Jock Goodyear he's on the inside oh, he's coming back. into that Armco again he almost clipped the little shoot for the pit wall there he's hugging that inside wall so tightly at the moment it's Jock Goodyear he's making it work but pulling away at the front is Josh Harm but Jock Goodyear at the moment is the one to watch because he's making some amazing moves he's now right up against the outside wall and making that cush work he is, and Look now the we have power. the TTL car. TTL car to the inside. Goodyear switches to the outside, so Goodyear trying to play the track to his advantage as the TTL car in the background slams into the oh, wall. Oh, contact the between Charman and Goodyear. That's game-changing for this race. Charman's rejoined, and he'll drop back into third or fourth position. 
Back at the front, Josh Harm has about a 10 car length gap. Back to Jock Goodyear. Jock Goodyear has about half a car length to Joel Berkeley as he dives inside, tries to do the slide job, and he per manages to get it done perfectly. How's this? Berkeley up fighting for second position was last at the start of the B main. He's made his way into the A main and now he's fighting for the race win. Joel Berkeley. He what? has the best pace of anyone. He is hunting the race leader down like there is no tomorrow. Look at this. Look at the pace he's got. Visually, visually, this is coming down. We don't need no lap times. This is visually coming down. The 90, the nine car, sorry, is hunting down Josh Harm. And he's gone and through. there is nothing he can do. Joel there Berkeley leads this race. Slow Chaos car. Yep. Gets out of the way though, the slow car there, I think the 17 of Ryan Gorton, who's been in a few little dramas himself, but Joel Berkeley's come from oh. last in the B main to make his way right up to the front of the field and take the lead in the A main Josh here. Harm. Josh Harm got into that wall hard and his pace is... Oh, he's big crash. Good job. He's uh, absolutely clipped up the tyre bundle. He's going to have steering damage. Yeah, he's got steering damage. He's out of the race. Safety car. Wow, just to add some controversy, out comes the safety car. Oh, sorry. Was that potentially the checkered flag? We might have lost track of time that badly. That's it. That's race done. Joel Berkeley's won. Is it gone that quick? We've missed him actually come through and win the race. So congratulations to Joel Berkeley. Last at the start of the B main, found his way into the A main, and then ends up winning it. What absolute pace. Congratulations to Joel Berkeley on an absolutely fantastic drive. That came out of nowhere. So with roughly five laps to go, he puts in one of the most amazing charges in the dying laps and snatches victory away from his teammate. What a finish. See if we can pick up the replay of Goodyear absolutely slamming the pit wall with a couple of laps to go in this one. Because that was a fairly big hit. He clipped the outside wall. Then we'll see here. Just clips that tyre bundle. And that absolutely destroyed the front of the car as he was trying to find a little bit of pace to get past the number 11 of Josh Harm. But congratulations to Joel Berkeley. He has picked up the win in this race. What an absolute drive. That was fantastic. Yeah, that was an incredible drive, and I've seen nothing like that on the dirt circus. And, uh, wow, if, if it's always like that, I might have to come back again, because that was crazy. Joel Berkeley, what a masterclass of a driver that was. That was absolutely fantastic. Congratulations to Joel Berkeley, to Josh Harm, and to Jock Udia for rounding out the podium. What has been an absolutely fantastic night of racing. Well done to those drivers. We, are, we might wait a couple of minutes and see if anyone comes over to have a quick chat. We've got Joel Berkeley now. We might quickly grab him in for a chat. Congratulations, Joel. What great pace you had. Well done. Uh, yeah, obviously tonight was a shocker night for me till the third A main. I'd even call the B main a bit of a shock. I completely sucked in it, I think. Yeah, just just had the right pace at the right time. It's all all you needed. Well done. Yeah, I definitely think those twenty five laps in the B main helped out with the setup for the feature. Um, I definitely think it was an advantage. And yeah, well, I didn't even know I didn't even know I was leading it till the checkers come out and Harm or Josh said to me, "I better not say." <laughs> Thanks for beating me, pretty much. <laughs> uh, congratulations, mate. Well done, and. Uh... TTL 1, 2, and 4. So congratulations to team uh, to TTL Esports. Well done. Yeah, thanks, mate. It's, um, massive thanks to Team TTL, Ash Media, Speedway Footage, and all the boys back at TTL for support. Congratulations, mate. Well done on picking up the Harvey Bay Auto Glass 410 Sprint Car Grand Slam. Well done. Thank you, Jay. Next go to... Get a Josh Harm next. Congratulations on P2, Josh, but geez, Joel come past you pretty quick there, mate. Um, um, yeah, <laughs> he really came out of nowhere and took me by surprise. and Took us uh, by surprise too. <laughs> yeah, well, not wrong. Oh, just And one lap to go too, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> uh, pretty good night though, you overall 
had pretty good pace, just not quite enough right at the end. Yeah, I can't complain. It was pretty quick all night. Um, I was thinking I was just a little bit touch tight off the corners in the feature. And... But no, yeah, can't complain at all. all right, congratulations, mate. Well done. And uh, we'll see you in the next one, no doubt. Awesome. Thank you. And we'll wrap up our interviews with uh, Jock Goodyear next. Jock, congratulations on finishing P3 in this one. Yeah, thank you. Pretty interesting race there you had, especially when you cleaned up the pit wall as well. A couple of laps to go. It was uh, pretty entertaining though. Just trying to get everything I had in the car to try to get that front. But when Joel went around me, I found that there was something up top. So I tried it and then I've seen the white flag. So I just thought I'm just going to go hardy. And then I went a bit hard and hit the inside wall. Luckily, it was the only one to go. But uh, congratulations on a good result, P3 for the night. Yeah, thank you. Well, Bo, fairly interesting night. We uh, we might wrap it up, though, because it is getting pretty late. But thank you for jumping in the booth with me tonight. Yeah, thanks, Jay. It's been uh, quite an eye-opener as how crazy dirt racing can get. And uh, next time I sign on to do one of these broadcasts on the dirt, I might bring an oxygen tank with me. <laughs> it was pretty full on all night. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in. Big thank you to uh, the team over at Race and Us for putting this together at Harvey Bay Auto Glass for their sponsorship. Big thank you to you for tuning in. And uh, we will wrap it up. But uh, don't forget, next broadcast, obviously, Saturday night, 6.30 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, Bathurst 1000 qualifying and top 15 shootout Sunday, 11.30 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, Bathurst 1000 race day. Race commences at 1 p.m. We'll be here live from start to finish for all 161 laps. Make sure you tune in. We will see you next time here on v Online. Harvey Bay Auto Glass is your local 24-7 mobile service. For replacement glass for all vehicles, including cars, trucks and heavy machinery, plus chip and crack repairs and window regulator repairs, call Harvey Bay Auto Glass. We come to you.